Welcome to the Mortal Realms, an Age of Sigmar multicast. Grab your hammer so we can clear a path through the chaos and forge our own narratives in the Age of Sigmar. Your allies through the Realm Gate this episode are... Hi, I'm Aaron, and if I had a hammer, I'd hammer all in the morning. Hi, I'm Paul. I thought I'd go camping in the hex with my family, but I was maligned for ports and events. This is Eric, and I'm here to hammer all... <laughs> hammer holla at you. <laughs> yeah, I don't got that. In this episode, we visit the Gairan half of the twin-tailed city of Ammerhall, where the faithful of Sigmar seek to turn the changing path of Zinch into the road out of town for his followers. Come watch us on YouTube, like and subscribe to this channel, listen on your favorite podcast app, and please leave us a review to help us share more stories with the AOS community. What are you doing tonight? I'm doing amazing. Doing well. Happy New Year. Hey, likewise. Happy New Year. Yeah, I agree. You guys, uh, can you guys feel 2018 permeating into kind of kind of your being, your hobby being? I do feel no. a little older, if that's what you mean. No, not not yet. Because no. I haven't I'm, finished celebrating Christmas yet. I got another Christmas this weekend. So got, once that's over, whoa, you got another Christmas. All right. Yeah, well, we'll, yeah. We'll, one side of the family, then the other side of the family, and the big thing is this side of the family is where I get my miniatures from. Oh, so you still got so, a haul coming. So real Christmas is still coming. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah, let's be honest. All right, all right. No, I'm I'm more talking about like hobby Viagra. Oh, okay. What well, is this rated? Um, uh, let's get the, uh, let's, let's let me see what's going on with Malign Portents. Yeah. Uh, let some me pretty, see what's going on. Pretty cool stuff happening there. Yeah. Looks like, like some interesting things coming on. The Nurgle release. Um, yep. Just announced doing a, a, a two events this year. Um, one is uh, for in co collaboration with Games Workshop to fit into the Ma Malign Portents timeline and kind of uh, be in that theme. And that one's happening on March 17th, 2018. And then we have another Coalescence event which is going to be uh, June 23rd. Uh, and that one is going to be kind of a follow-up to last year's uh, event uh, called the Desolation of Aristat. Maybe a little callback to some other, you know, subtitled. Never, never heard of it. Never heard of it. No, no, no. Didn't run an event about it last year at all. Nothing. <laughs> Actually, but, no, uh, I, do, I do love continuity, so I take it back. I have <laughs> Um, so yeah, so a lot of cool things happening, a lot of great models hitting the, hitting the fan. Um, <laughs> that's the last place a model should hit. Well, <laughs> did they perform poorly in game? I, I don't understand what's no, going it's, on. It's, it's Nurgle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. so yeah, so lots of things happening, um, this year. I, I don't know. I've just, I'm pretty excited for 2018. I'm excited for, um, I just put out actually a 2017 retrospective on on Twitter. It was a it was like a seven part documentary. Oh sure. Um, on <laughs> on the the models and things I did in the hobby this past year, and it was cool. Kind of just looking back, um, uh, I I painted about 107 models. Wee. It's not. It's not. I think there's people who are kicking a lot more models out the door than I am, but. Um, well, not as much love and care as maybe you did. I, I mean, I think I can well, claim most love, most care of my models than sure, anyone. Than anyone else? Are you, I can't <laughs> claim most number, but since most love, most care is subjective, I can claim that one, and nobody can. Well, disagree. it's a game. Of, it's a game of soft scores, right? So, yep. well, I can disagree, uh, but nobody can prove it, right? I mean, are you, uh, exactly. are you happy with happy with your productivity, your turnout? You know, I was, uh, hobby? I don't know that I was as focused. So in, a year before last, uh, so 2016, I was really focused on like what I could churn out. I had like a whole list of things I was going to sure. accomplish. I didn't, I didn't accomplish all those, but I accomplished a bunch of other ones. This year was much more relaxed. I really enjoyed it. Um, I got to, I mean, we got to dabble in a few things. Um, and so it was, it was nice, but, uh, I mean, coalescence and going to Holy Havoc and just having, I don't know. More community involvement this year felt felt really good. Right on. Twenty seventeen uh, felt good. 
2018 is going to feel better. What are you guys thinking? Well, yeah. Um, I don't know. 2018 I'm, is I'm a little unpredictable. That's true. At this point, who knows where we're going? Uh, I'm moving to a new, new into a new space. Hopefully, that'll in, inspire me to take a crack at the hobby more diligently. Outside the reading of all the things. Also, yeah, yeah. true. I'm a slow reader. We got this. We got this narrative event coming up at Acon too, so uh, we'll see how that's going to work we, out. We're going to have to do it. Yeah, we're going to have to do a show on that. Uh, uh, we're, we'll, we'll have to. We need to spend time just unpacking that. How's that going? Are you uh, you guys moving along? Uh, getting a good idea of what's going on. Uh, just need to solidify it before I start telling other people what's happening. Don't want to change anything Absolutely. halfway stream. So everybody likes change, as we're going <laughs> to see in this book. Well, or some people don't. <laughs> Those people are jerks, right? I mean, that's the theme of this book, right? <laughs> You're to hear first main characters of the story. Paul thinks they're jerks. <laughs> All right. So why don't we jump into the most important part of this episode, and that's the story phase. In the story phase, we delve into the stories, characters, creatures, and environments of the nine realms. Dark forces stir within the bowers of the mysterious Hexwood. A great war host of Zangor Beeskin, creatures devoted to Zinch, the architect of fate, defile the once verdant lands of Giran. All that opposes them are the noble stormcast eternals of the hallowed knights. Reforged in resplendent Sigmarite and wielding the lightning of Azir, few can stand against these heroes. But Zinch's followers are cunning, and as the hallowed knights wage bloody war, a second attack on the city of Hammerhall, which the stormcasts are oath sworn to defend, is coming to pass. Both the warriors without and the hunters within the city must act fast, or the truth about the Hexwood will undo everything they have fought so hard to protect. So dramatic. If that right there doesn't make you want to read this story, I don't know what's wrong with you. <laughs> um, guys, let's, let's talk about Hammerhall for a little bit. Um, as, we, as we tried last uh, episode, we're going to try and keep the first half of our discussion a little spoiler-free for all those folks who haven't read it, who want to read it, but want to get an impression of what the story is about, if that didn't do it for you. Um, and you should then, totally read it. Yeah, you should totally read it. And then uh, Sylvaneth, so get happy at the end. <laughs> <laughs> literally. Spoilers. We just literally said spoilers. Just said, right? There's a whole quote. Sorry. I did air quotes. Yeah. And then after that, we were going to talk about spoilers. But now it's, the it's a joke because Sylvaneth are never happy. <laughs> it's true. That's a good point. <laughs> Actually, more true than you realize. Um, but let's, let's talk about some spoiler-free stuff. Let's talk about the facts, the things that people need to know about this book here. Uh, right. I like to start with the when and the where. Uh, when, or basically in the present, as is, is far as we know. Um, I think at one point I read that Josh Reynolds either wrote or he was in an interview or something, but when, this story is basically as far up in the storyline as, as we've gotten. So we're, we're set in the present. Every major event has basically happened in the past so far. Uh, the Realm Gate Wars have occurred especially on the Gairan front, which will come up later, or are over. Yeah. And uh, Sigmar has basically founded his, his first cities, uh, one of which gets us to the where is uh, is the city of Hammerhall. Mm -hmm. uh, ow, it, ow! It, yeah. it does say it's 100 years since the Stormcast descended. Ooh, That's a gotcha. little bit farther than the, the last current thing that we had. So Okay, sure, part. sure. So we're really pushing that, that timeline yeah. forward. Uh, basically, it's in the title. You need to know where we're at. It's uh, Hammerhall. So uh, mm -hmm. for fo folks who don't know, it's it's known as a twin-tailed city because uh, it's yeah. actually, I don't know, do we call it two cities in one? In yeah. that I think of like, I mean, we've got some examples like the Twin Cities or, um, you know, just where two cities are so close to each other, they're basically one. Um, you mean yeah. Minneapolis and St. Like, Paul? First. In Minneapolis and St. Paul. People, or like yeah. the Quad Cities down in Illinois? In yeah, Illinois. those ones. <laughs> quad Cities. <laughs> Peoria. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> cultural mecca, that Peoria. Um, so there is. Peoria. I always thought they just had big legs. <laughs> oh, <laughs> sorry, Domus. I mean, I, I just I tried to give you a shout out, but whatever. Sorry, Tom. <laughs> uh, but uh, one of the interesting things about being in the present is that the Stormcast have been here for 100 years. So they're not this like overwhelming force at this point. They're kind of in the cities. So they're, they've been around, everybody knows who they are. So this isn't a, oh my goodness, look at these new people that showed up story. This is a, they've been here, we have some relationships going on, and we're going to explore those relationships a little bit more. Yeah. So if you started out reading some of the earlier stories, it's not quite the same dynamic. 
No, agreed. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, it, it's no longer sort of a shock and awe, even though I imagine there's still a level of awe when dealing with them. But mm -hmm. uh, the pe definitely people are getting getting used to the sight of them. Uh, so uh, in Hermahal, the tw Twin Cities, because they span two different realms uh, through a realm gate, we're talking um, Akshi and, and Gairan, and this story is set in the, the Gairan side of things. Um, I, also, I like how the they have shorthand names, uh, Hammerhall Gyra and Hammerhall yeah. Aksha. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Just kind of, it feels like, okay, the people live there and, and that's what they, that's how they shorthand it, right? Sure. Um, so those are kind of cool touches that, that are put in. So it's literally the same amount of syllables though, right? Two less, or same syllable. <laughs> <two. laughs> But still, it's, it's like if you pronounce organ or organ, right? It, it shows that you're you're from there. You're in yep. the know. Yep. Yep. Uh, and uh, so I'm I'm in the know. I, I'm I've always, a, I, I'm I've from there. So. I, I I know you know. Uh, <laughs> and so it's what one besides the fact that it's a, a dual city. One interesting side of or tidbit about the Gyran side of things is uh, since it's set in the Roman life, which we know mm -hmm. is is very verdant, very very. What's another word for life full? Bounteous, fertile. Bounteous. Yeah, fertile. These are all great words. Um, so much so vocabulary that, with the motor <laughs> realm. I love it. <laughs> I'm pulling my uh, It it because of that. I mean, the city would otherwise be sort of not under attack, but constantly being sort of besieged by the wildlife that exists in this realm. And so, what they got to do is they pipe in a bunch of lava from Hammer Hall Aksha to sort of mm -hmm. create a, a defense barrier around the city. So, because of the the constant the constant life. Right up at their doorstep, uh, this the city has a pretty robust defense system, which uh, will probably come into play a little bit later when we're talking about the plot of this this book. Um, mm -hmm. That, one that of is cool, really interesting. Sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say one of the cool. There is a, a an image that's uh, cast later in the book of of Hammerhall um, Gyra looking like concentric circles of a tree, mm -hmm. uh, and so kind of. Uh, and one of the things they talk about is kind of that. I mean, the city, you, you get, you know, when they first started, it was yay big. The, the lava pop, piped out to there and mm -hmm. kept the, the living back or the, yeah, the living away. <laughs> <laughs> and then they grew a little further, piped the lava out a little further. And so mm -hmm. just this idea of it growing similar to a tree is mm -hmm. just a really cool, I don't know, tie into where it's set. You know, sure, it's almost yeah. like even... Even the the man made stuff can't help but abide by the the rules of uh, of Garand. So, yeah, it, and one of the other interesting things that immediately was brought to mind by this whole idea of the lava piping through is that this realm gate is stabilized, right? It's not like a normal realm gate; like you can just kind of walk from one side to the other, uh, which is a a different take on the realm gate than you might have had uh, in a previous story, or even from the rules of Age of Sigmar. It's uh, it's very much just kind of a normal everyday thing, for both sides to be able to go back and forth. So, yeah. I mean, I just walk through portals to get to my job every day too. Like, that's <laughs> no big deal. hey, we can't all live your life, Aaron. <laughs> that's true. Though you wish you could. Uh, anything else we want to talk about the city? Because we're gonna we're gonna branch out. We're gonna head out into the in the wilds Ooh. a little bit. Ooh, where are we going? Well, one of the interesting things I think is that it's also not the first time that Hammer Hall has been present because we have that Shadows over Hammer Hall. So it, it's named as the second largest city uh, outside of Azir besides... Oh, no, it is the largest city outside of Azir. Sorry. Yeah, I think so. Azerheim is the largest, and Hammer Hall is the second largest, um, which is kind of cool. So, Sure. I can't show it, but if you ever get a chance to take a look at the map of the city, it's it's you know bigger than any world, mm -hmm. you know, real, real life city that you'd, you'd come across for sure. Um, yeah, if it, did you guys read anything from the uh, Warhammer Quest uh, Shadows Over Hammer Hall? Do we get any tidbits about Hammer Hall that we don't get from this book? Um, I think what really stood out from that book, besides just what was going on in it, was um, just the extent of like the uh, and and you kind of get it in this book too of the the lava lava tunnels and the lava moats and so on and so forth, and just the work that goes into creating those, and yeah. what an endeavor it takes from the um, Ironwald Arsenal and the What's the other one? So uh, the human wizards, the collegiate arcane, the I think. Collegiate arcane. Yep. Yeah. Anyways, the, the point being, it, it's more intricate than just you know a concentric set of uh, moats, even though that's that's already pretty um, impressive to create. But there's mm -hmm. underground tunnels, and whether they need to be filled in or what they're used for after they're not being used anymore, um, it, it sort of plays a part in in the 
description in the story that goes Paul, into that. Did you uh, read um, Josh Reynolds' uh, Ask FM on the Realm Gate thing? Mm -hmm. what yeah. Did he, say? Uh, he said specifically that the, the Realm Gate itself is either stabilized by a Lord Celestine or by the Collegiate Arcane. So there's definitely a strong presence of some. Um, either magic or uh, Sigmar's power going on here. Yeah. Um, so. But that's also a, a fun thing about this specific story is that if you really want to, you can find the map in Shadows Over Hammerhall to talk about what exactly we're talking about here. So that's kind of a cool extra element that we don't have in any of the stories that we've read so far. I wonder yeah. if a Lord Ordinator could stabilize a Realm Gate. Right? Oh, yeah. I mean, like, yeah, I, I definitely think so. Or, I mean, probably it was involved in, like, the building of, like, the different tunnels and... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so we, stuff too. yeah. I mean, we get that from the the new new release or, uh, you know, some the of the new stuff portent. from Line Portents, um, Harbingers, that they've got the the new Stormcast guy, the Lord Ordinator, is kind of like an engineer, architect, um, you know, able to build things and ward things. And that plays into this city as well, or into this book as well, in that Hammerhall is so warded. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and so nothing's it's it's very protected from chaos and other things. Yeah, yeah. It's, so it's got these lava channels that stop the life from coming in, but it's also got these wards that stop other things from coming in, right? Like this is not a chaos tainted city uh, in general, right? Um, totally pure. Yeah, I mean, there's no <laughs> no problem going on. Yeah, white as the driven snow. <laughs> that, mm -hmm. True. Any other Hammerhall thoughts? Because I, I want to get outside the city. I mean, just just take place in the city. This Done. has got a twofold. Let's 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 talk about this. Uh, what, what, for whatever, whatever there is to talk about, let's talk about this hexwood because that's another setting oh. uh, in in this book. Uh, apparently, it's a I don't know a hexwood, a, a wood somewhere outside the city limits of Hammerhall, Gyran, oh. um, as as we sort of found throughout the the stories in the mortal realms. Um, there's uh, regardless of the the realm that you're on, there's going to be a, a varied, a variety of landscapes out there, and so this this is another, I don't know, specific area mm -hmm. in uh, Gairin. It's in the yep. Nevergreen Mountains, which uh, has a really interesting description. So it's kind of visible from the city of Hammerhall. So that's kind of a cool, you know, at least the the general location is visible. So sure, spooky. Mm -hmm. uh, not much else to say about that, as far as we know, until we get into the, the story. But yep. uh, I'm. I mentioned Guy Ran, and the one other thought I wanted to, to bring up on that was that uh, from our experience in Guy Ran, for the most part, the the main antagonist that we find there is is often Nurgle or you know Nurgle's followers. Um, for a lot of the Realm Gate Wars, it was all Nurgle all the time when we were talking about Guy Ran. Um, but as we found sort of towards the end of those um, those Realm Gate Wars, not to say that one side won, won or lost, but I don't know that Nurgle had, was quite is quite as influential there as, as he used to be kind of on the kind of on the back foot these days. Yeah. I think there's a feeling that he didn't lose over lose overall, but from where he was in control of grand Tories at now, there's definitely a, a big uh, defeat and, sure. and he's kind of licking his wounds that, 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 that having and owning the total of grand is out of his reach at the moment. Yeah, he's not in the expansion phase. He's in the phase of decline. I think is, sure. is, is being very clear about that. Yeah, and when uh, whenever somebody's waning, I find uh, whenever there's a vacuum, I, I find that there there tends to be those who try to fill it. And so I don't. Who can? Well, how do you them? how do you fill vacuums? Um, well, I mean, normally I just like I have a really hairy carpet in my living room, and so I just yeah. back it, vacuum a few times, and it it fills up. It's weird you'd ask, but yeah. Well, I mean, I was talking about Zinge, but... <laughs> oh, <laughs> shit. Weird. <laughs> weird. Like, like, maybe if we used the word vortex, maybe that would have been a little clearer, Eric. Oh, I, just, oh. I don't know. How then I would have understood. Yeah. How do you fill your vortex? I get it. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Um, that's so that's, wrong, that feels like the wrong question there. Yeah, okay. We're, 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 we're tone aligned, that's for sure. Uh, <laughs> So that's basically the where. Is there anybody other, any other places you guys want to talk about? Like we're, I mean, we're going to see a few other places uh, as this story progresses. Yeah, there's some cool, cool places inside of Hammerhall and and mm -hmm. such that are that are interesting. But yeah, we, we'll wait on those. But um, right on. So we've cool. been we've been talking about the when we've been talking about the where. Let's talk about the who. Who are we dealing who? with? Who? Yeah. So we've got, as you might expect, some main characters. We got some people that we're we're following, and uh, I think 
maybe in all of Josh Reynolds' books, but at least the most recent ones that we've been reading, we, we often get a, a variety or more than one point of view at the very least from a different perspective. And so uh, some or all of the folks were following. Let's let's start with uh, Mr. Soul Gage. Am I saying that right? Soul? Saul? How would you say that? I would say Soul. Soul? Yep. Soul Gage? Yeah. Um, he is a, a witch hunter of the Order of Azir. We know those guys. We've seen those before. Mm -hmm. um, Do you get it? Like he's... He's soul gauge because he gauges other people's souls about how pure they are. Mm -hmm. Get it? Oh, I didn't even think about that. That's messed what? up. I was That's thinking. It, I thought I was thinking it spelled S O L, so I thought maybe it was like a light, <laughs> a light meter. <laughs> I was gonna go which, with the S O L which, thing, which is also good because uh, the radiance of Sigmar. Hmm. Only true. He brings it in the dark places. Gosh, it's just all over the place. Um, but there. There is a tie-in with another name, but yeah. So, Witch Hunter, um, really cool dynamic. Uh, he's kind of the leader of of the the heroes or a group of the heroes that were were experiencing their, through. Um, and yeah, I mean, I. How did you guys think he stacked up next to um, kind of the main character of City of Shadow, Secrets? City of Secrets, or no, Shadows of Our um, Spear of Shadows. Um, that oh, main right. character. Gotcha. Well, I mean, comparable. Well, no, I think I, I was drawn to comparing them to the main character of City Circus, mainly because it was both yep. witch hunters. Yep, yep. Um, in that, if you, if you wanted to compare against the Spear of Shadows guy, then I would say that he seems a little bit more obviously mm, capable, I guess. And, he, and he's kind of meant to be, or a little bit more experienced. Not that the, what was he, yep. uh, shooter guy. What's What do we call What do you call that? <laughs> Um, but they kind of filled two different roles where one was sort of uh, from Spear Shadows or inadvertently uh, yep. thrust into some sort of leadership role, whereas I think Soul was uh, well suited from the beginning. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, now, if you were to compare him from to the guy, he's either Kalos or Toll. I can't remember which one's which. Toll, I think, is the mm -hmm. witch hunter in City of Secrets. Keep uh, it one syllable. Yeah, right. Uh, I, th I mean, it's hard not... It's hard to differentiate them a little bit, which I guess comes with the territory of having very similar yeah. uh, roles or models, whatever you want to call it. Um, but I mean, because of that, I guess it's sort of a shorthand. Like if you know what mm -hmm. uh, you know what they are, if you're a witch hunter or a ironbreaker or whatever you are, um, like it, it gives you an idea right off the bat of the sort of character that 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 person's going to be. So like, even though we've never come across Soul Gauge, actually this is a good tie-in. Uh, even though we've never come across him before, we can assume that he's going to be sharp. He's going to be effective. Uh, we know he's not a huge fan of chaos. Um, right. So it's great because we, we get a leg up right off the bat knowing um, about him just because we know he's a witch hunter. Yeah. Well, see, I would compare Toll a little bit to MacGyver. He seemed a little bit more like in the shadows, had some cool like little new things that we haven't seen before. And Soul to me, feels a little bit more like Hannibal, right? Like he's got a plan. He's going to assemble his guys, and he's going to see it through. Like Hannibal right? Lecter? No, Hannibal from the A team. Come on. Oh, okay, gotcha. Okay, yeah, no, I, gotcha. I got. I got thrown off by the idea that MacGyver was a ninja who stuck to the shadows. <laughs> well, I mean, like you know, <laughs> yeah, <just laughs> kind of makes do with what he has, and sure, sure. I don't know. Do you think MacGyver was kind of a ninja? I mean, he's like an American ninja. Well, he's just there's like an American ninja warrior. It was just. Right? Very, it was just a very sunshiny show, or like uh, well lit. I don't Did know. you see the episode where they got eaten by ants? Huh? That was not a sunshiny show. <laughs> anyway, so who else we got? Yeah, well, there's another um, sort of from a different perspective or a different uh, setting throughout the book is we're, we're going to be following Serena Sunstrike, and she is a liberator of the Steel Souls Warrior Chamber. I feel like uh, we've, heard them, we've heard of them before, right? What? No. Yeah. Maybe. I think so. A uh, little Gardas, a little Grim. Mm -hmm. Sure, I wouldn't wouldn't come little, but yeah, uh, that's that. <laughs> I mean, little goes a long way. Oh, okay, right. Only the faithful. Uh, <laughs> so she's a, she's a liberator of, uh, under Gardas, specifically yeah. under his liberator prime, whose name I forget, but um, he he makes an appearance in this book as well. Uh, but again, when I was talking before about it's a we're dealing with new characters, but once we know. Like who they are, what what they do. Again, that gives us a leg up and gives us a a, a a shortcut to knowing the sort of person they are. So if you're if you're a liberator in the Steel Soul, Souls Warrior Chamber, we we know you're going to be dedicated. We know you're going to be resolute. We know you're going to be perpetually faithful, almost exclusively yep. faithful. Um, but 
she's got the sword and the shield, so she doesn't get the plus one. So you know, oh, up, obviously man. she's a narrative character, not a you know match play character. Sure, those are the characters I prefer, I would say. <laughs> uh, yeah, but she's uh, she's out there um, in the wild. She's outside the city gates, and she's uh, following guarders, and they're doing you know they're doing their uh, knights thing. Uh, well, out. And I just want to say real quick, I think I think you're on to something that. I mean, we've learned a lot about Lord Celestance throughout the number of books from the different um, yeah. chapters. And so there's room now to differentiate them, right? Um, we haven't really gotten to know many liberators or, True. you know, or just, uh, I guess, the, you know, foot troops. You know, we, we get some people here, but the, in, um, in a number of Josh Reynolds books, he's been able to play with kind of the regular Joes and give them more personality and start giving them some more character. And so, um, while the, yeah, the liberators in general, we kind of know who they are from all the other books. Now we can shed the archetype here. Whereas like the witch hunter, we don't have a lot of examples of those. You're not going to get a ton. Like you're not going to get an army of witch hunters to create an archetype. Don't we've give got Paul these, any ideas. We've got these two, <laughs> <laughs> we've got these two witch hunter characters so far across these books to give us to, to continue to feed kind of what's the base understanding of this type of character. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, oh, the, other, yeah. the other thing is uh, that that the Liberator is not a hero, right? The Liberator is a battle line. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's an interesting departure, right? Like, we have hero that's mentioned as we're going on, but it, it is more of a, like, kind of a more common approach to it. Um, so this is the first time I think that we've seen a, a battle line character or even just, like, a non-hero character to play kind of a pivotal role and to have their perspective be represented pretty strongly in the book. So, yeah, I'm not going to debate you on this at, at this point. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> but no, I think it's, it's, it was an unexpected uh, and, and really cool choice. And here's the connection. His first name is Sol, S O L. Mm -hmm. uh, and her last name, second name is Sunstrike. So there's a little bit of, a uh, little bit of sun word, word play Light. there. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Uh... I'm I'm so bright. My dad calls me son. He wears the shades. <laughs> <laughs> and that leads right into non sequitur into our third sort of grouping of 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 point of views. Um, I'm not going to list them all here, but we we do get the perspective of the the Zinchian forces. I don't know the Zinchian horse uh, heroes, the people sort of leading this charge, and it's through their point of view we get a uh, a more clear understanding of what they're up to. Um, mm -hmm. It, it's. I mean, we get a, a bunch of different hero types, which is always nice to sort of get their different perspectives. And um, it, it's we get an insight as to when these these you know Zinchian followers, these Zinchian cultists um, get together. We, we know there's going to be a there's going to be an interesting plot. There's going to be plots within plots within plots within plans. <laughs> well, it's like <laughs> it's like the schemes have schemes have schemes. Sure, it's an enigma wrapped in a conundrum. Wrapped in an onion. And then in an onion, yeah, because they're going to make you cry. You better believe it. Lots of layers. <laughs> Lots of layers. Um, and so, I mean, speaking of those plots, I guess we can talk a little bit just what, what the the book's even about, right? So the little intro gave us a clue that, that Paul read before, but we can we can tap into the fact that Hammer Hall is a, a city that, um, whether the people there know it or not, is a city that's under attack. I mean, it's sort of a, you know, a shining jewel of of gyran and, and Akshi and i mean chaos can't let that stand right they can't deal with that um well i mean if if nurgle is the country boy sure uh i mean <laughs> zinch is the city boy the city boy yeah uh and and with the decline as we talked about that that waning of nurgle and the rise of the cities of sigmar of course we've heard this before but zinch really has much more playground and and um you know, can get his claws into politics and social interaction and uh, hubris and, you know, people, when people feel chill and like they got things figured out, uh, that's where he likes to play. Yeah, this is bread, bread and butter. In fact, I reckon he probably was excited when he saw these cities popping up because he's like, all right, well, Ooh. now it's my turn. <laughs> Ooh, look at that one. Dibs, dibs, <laughs> dibs. <laughs> that's mine. Well, um, and so... I guess because of that, um, we follow Soul a little bit, and uh, he's kind of on the hunt 
he's uh, solving solving mysteries within the city limits. Apparently, mm-hmm. there's all sorts of mysterious happenings at the uh, the air docks, and so him and his him and his crew are doing some sleuthing down there. Um, yeah, so- we get and we we got this in the um, spears of shadow sphere of shadows where we got to visit the kind of aether docks of excelsius yeah. uh, we got mm-hmm. aether docks here too and that's it's cool and there's not just a uh, caradrin there uh you know we're chilling with some some sw- um swift talk mm-hmm. that's swift talk and, and we got some stuff going on there and a couple other just kind of were there regular like, old airships were there mm-hmm. like scourge were the privateers there too the Dark there was Elf? no mention of the privateers. There were mention of the Swift Talk data specifically, and there were also some other airships of unknown affiliation, basically. Oh sure. Those I think those guys were those guys must have been the, the privateer. That's totally, yeah. yeah I, I totally agree with you. I support you in this decision. I appreciate that. Um so yeah, that's that's a great a great setting for you know, great setting for a mystery. Uh, and then we, we we shift gears back and forth uh, between that and then uh, Serena's uh, point of view. So she's following Gardas as they're, for the most part, defending uh, a group of local human f- uh, followers of Alario. So basically, uh, uh, the true denizens of the of um, Gairan um, from a bunch of Zangor attacks. Nobody wants to be attacked by Zangors. I don't. Um, it's like the worst. But, yeah. No, thank you. Twist uh, so, so they're they're out there, but as you might expect, that it, it's. Uh, it's a smaller part of a larger whole. And then, like I said before, the, uh, the followers of Zinch are all wrapped up somehow in between, in between the two. They're getting, getting mixed up between both sides. Uh, there's gotta be some connection. We just don't know what. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it, yeah, I mean, and there's this, um, I mean, we set up this, uh, I mean, do you want to talk about this, ma- this other kind of one of those main characters on the, in this section, what's his name? Um, Tall? 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 Uh, Rollo Tarn. Rollo Tarn. Nah, oh. yeah, I make the mistake. Yep. Um, yep. And he's a, you know, they're kind of investigating his space. Mm-hmm. They're trying to find out what, you know, he's this upstanding citizen. Everybody, like, he's got connections up high. He's a human, right? Um, you know, what, what could possibly be drawing the clues of the witch hunters to hear um he's up you know he's he's in the timber trade um mm-hmm. he's he's been able to go out into well is this is this maybe something we want to talk about on the the back half when we actually get into sure. the plot you're right you're right you're right, yeah. we get, you're right. Uh, and i don't i don't mean to, i don't mean to be coy i want to get into spoilers too well mm-hmm. what's interesting from the non from the non-spoiler point of view is that uh this is a character who's kind of making a living with the resources of the land Mm-hmm. Sure. Uh, and and kind of that connection. So it, it's it's kind of this idea is how does how does the the Hammerhall Gyra or and trying it's trying to overtake them. How do they get all this resources? How do they farm it? How do they yeah, get what they need out of it in order to um, for them to keep building the city and to <laughs> share with Hammerhall Aksha? So I think this guy. This guy plays kind of that role of, um, kind of the frontiersman or or the businessman who's gone out and actually made figured out how to do something with mm-hmm. surroundings in order to benefit and help build. This. Yeah. Oh, I feel are we losing him? Oh, there he is. He's back. Um. Yeah. I no. Think, I, I actually that's a good point. Oh, mm-hmm. go ahead, Paul. I, I think one of the other, other interesting things is that it deals with the fact that Hammer Hall seems to be growing really fast. Right, mm-hmm. like you show up the city and everybody shows up, and so one of the themes is the expansion of Hammer Hall, right? Like, so what's going on? There's there's some tension going on between the expansion of what's supposed to be happening and what is happening, and like that's where this investigation comes in. They're like, all right, there's an expansion going on. We need to deal with this, and there's this guy, and he's he's being able to facilitate that, but we're not really sure. That that's in, in a good way. So we're going to try and figure out what's going on. Let me ask you guys a question. Hit me. Do you know what it's called when a city's growing so fast that the bridges don't reach the other side? Exurbia? Getting too big for your bridges. <laughs> oh. All right. Well, oh, uh, no, I hear my, my wow. wife calling. I got to. I'm sorry. Yeah, I got to um, go. Wow. All right. I'll continue on without you. <laughs> All right. Apparently, you don't need us. <laughs> um, 
because I want to talk about this plot. I want to talk about this plot more and in depth. All right. But before we do, before we move on to that spoiler side of things, do we want to do we want to real quick just give give our thoughts generally of the book? Do we want to recommend this book? What do you think? Well, I think that's the number one thing, right? It's not actually a book. It's about 150 pages. It's kind of a short story. It's not like maybe a novella. I wouldn't call it a book. Um, so it's a real easy read uh, compared to some of the other books that if you're concerned about it being a little bit longer, it's a quick read. Um, sure. So, I mean, it's, it's real quick, but it's also bound between a cover. I would definitely call it a book. But it's Hammerhall and other stories. No, it's a story, yeah, you're right. Sure, right? It's a story. Yeah. Uh, I, I definitely enjoyed it. I was actually surprised at the fact that there wasn't just kind of one plot line. Uh, I, I was very surprised that there... It's a, it's it's a zinc book, like man. Of course it's not one plot line. But in, and in such a short <laughs> space, it didn't. I didn't feel like either plot line got too little time. That's true. And I felt like it was a really interesting resolution. Uh, and I, I really enjoyed the way that it developed. I, I didn't feel like I was reading a short story. I felt like I was reading a book. It just happened to be short. Sure. Does that make more sense? Yeah, I gotcha. I buy that. Uh, Eric, what'd you think? Yeah, I as towards the end of it, um, I was definitely wanting some more, um, but I, I I remember having the thought that I would love to read something like this once a month. Uh, you know, like just have 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 this be kind of the the short story form that you just get continuous. Um. You just see it grow little bits at a time, um, or you're like, "Hey, I'm waiting for the next installment of this one." Uh, it's a small, you know, it's a small piece that would be really cool to to just get kind of drip fed over time. Um, maybe not through a, a a book. Like, so I haven't gone through to look at the other books in this collection uh, stories. Some of them are coming from some past stories that I've already read, um, but. It, I'm I'm definitely interested in seeing what else is in here because I think this kind of book where there's a whole bunch of small uh, stories that followed up on in another collection down the road, mm-hmm. I actually think I'd kind of dig that is seeing instead of you know digging into one book and getting one setting and one group of people, getting more of a kind of like getting a lot of different experiences from a lot of different places could be a fun way to. Um, to grab this this particular story, I think is a must read. Um, in that this is this is the new reality of the mortal realms. It's it is down at the 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 prince and the pauper level, um, and you've got a lot of really now you're getting to a lot of differentiation in what kind of characters uh, are possible in the mortal mm-hmm. realms, um, and there's just some really cool interactions and relationships dynamics uh, that we don't haven't seen in any other book so well and one of the real nice I recommend thing, it. yeah sorry go ahead um no i just wanted real, to clarify that that means i i recommend it one of the real nice things about this book is that it is a real nice primer just because it has so many different stories if you've never read anything else in aos before you're going to get a taste of a bunch of different perspectives you're going to get a taste of a bunch of different settings even though it's all within the mortal realms right um it gives you an idea of what is possible and kind of what is available without necessarily tying yourself to a longer story. Uh, and so if you haven't read anything before, that might be a real nice way to enter into it, to be like, do I like this? Do I want to commit to reading a book? Right? Is this something that appeals to me? Because this story is kind of about a Zinchian plot. There's another story on it that's basically about two different chambers of Stormcast, you know, like... And then there's some of the audio dramas have been novelized as well. So it gets into a lot of interesting territory and it's not that hard to read and it's not that long to read. So it allows you to get a a real good taste of what's going on in AOS right now, which is a real, real nice perspective because all the other books that have been like this are about the Sylvaneth or they're about the Fire Slayers, right? This is, nope, let's just kind of explore what's going on out there. True, true, true. Um, oh, true, Aaron. From my vantage point, I'm gonna I'm gonna lead with this, and I'm gonna I gotta clarify. In that, I think Eric, you said it. You thought it was it was a must read. I don't think I would categorize it as a must read. However, I did like it. Uh, I do rate it highly, and I do recommend it get read. But I wouldn't necessarily call it a must read. In that, I I consider must reads out there stuff that really 
is integral to the story or is like guiding where the 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 the, the larger plot of the mortal realms realms is going thinking like the realm gate war books or like maybe this this the, the lamentations books things like that are what i would consider the must reads the reason i don't consider this one a must read is that it very much is a beginning middle and end sort of book it is very self-contained and who's to say whether or not we'll see these characters again maybe we will maybe we won't but i very much get the impression that this was a shot like a, a snapshot in the life of what it, what it's like living in one of these major cities and we just move on to the next thing after the fact i'm cool with that i'm glad those exist they're probably necessary to flesh the the setting out but mm -hmm. because of that i still wouldn't call it i wouldn't call it a must read if you didn't read this you wouldn't be lost later on probably which is fine i'm, I'm totally fine with it yeah so i think I think my must read is tied a little bit to the question of like who should read this. Um, and I, and I, th I think that I like those, I love those big stories. And I think for somebody who's like, I must know what's going on in the moral realms, those are must read in that category. Yeah. But if it's introduction, like Paul was saying, introduction to the setting as it is right now, yeah, you, get, you get both kind of the, the insanity of AOS uh, the bigness of the largeness of it, the chaos, the chaos nature of it. I don't, it's not as um, far expansive as Spear of Shadows, where they're going to so many different really crazy places. Sure. Um, so it doesn't show you as big of that. But I think it'd be really good for somebody coming in from any other material having this as a soft landing into Age of Sigmar. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, so that's where I should clarify maybe my, if I were to recommend. A new reader of AOS fiction to check something out. Just this one first. Sure, true, mm -hmm. and I agree with that too. I definitely mm -hmm. is a good uh, place, and as Paul was saying before too, I think that's similar to what he was saying. Um, it's a good place to dip your toe in the water. It's it's low investment. It's like low stakes to like read it, um, mm -hmm. and so I, I agree on that front too. You know, actually, not and now that you mentioned that. I'm starting to think, I wonder, would, would a story like this with the same moving pieces, and we probably should talk about this later, but just generally, it, it almost didn't seem out of place if you were to read about it in the world that was, like back in like 8th edition, like fantasy. Um, ma major city, uh, mysterious forest, like cultists mm -hmm. out there trying to break into the city. Like it has all the, the beats that you could get out of, a, a you know, back in the mm -hmm. old world. Um, and because of that, it also is maybe a good place to jump into and get introduced into the AOS because it's not super unfamiliar. Um, well, and that, that was one of my other points is that it doesn't feel, I was trying to make that it doesn't feel like a short story. It feels like a novel, right? Mm -hmm. If we've got kind of the early setting of AOS and we've got kind of the later setting that we're into now, where instead of having to explain what's going on, we have a good idea of what's going on and we can just enjoy the ride. This is definitely a story that we can just enjoy the ride. Yeah, and that's a real nice place. Uh, and also, just from a simple like reality, economic perspective, the book came out in paperback. It's automatically going to be cheaper, uh, so it's the cheapest entry we've got right now. Uh, and it's got a bunch of different stories that all have a bunch of different perspectives. Uh, if you want to read more about all these different things, there's already an existing body of literature for everything out there. So it it, it is a nice like it's a great starting point if you've never read anything before. Because it's cheap, it's accessible, and anything you want, there's already more stuff out there for it. True, true. Um, it's also, it's also uh, audio as well. So um, there was sort of a, a, a not a, a, like a desert, like there was a dearth of audiobooks for a while. I mean, they were coming up pretty hot and heavy, but then they sort of stopped. And this is one that is is on audio again, which is how I how I consumed it. I listened to it um, and did a great job. It's, I mean, their quality for their their audio is is pretty great. It's not a an audio book not audio drama um but still i don't know who narrated it but did a great job and i, I don't think i lost anything by listening to it that way um i think we sort of touched on it a little bit we can be just real quick is there anybody else that you would recommend this book to are there any other types of people individuals who who, who else would be suited to reading this book hmm. i mean so as you mentioned uh, i think early on um I mean, this is Gardas. This is another chapter. I mean, he just went down. Um, you know, he went to all the, through the realm gates. He was in Garan. He was in the Garden Nurgle. He went back to the um, Garden recently, um, in in uh, the Garden of Nurgle. What was it called? Play Garden. Play Garden. Yeah. Um, and came back out, and now he's over here in Hammerhall, um, and you know the 
so the the, the hallowed knights if you love that uh, chamber this is definitely a great one um you mm-hmm. learn some some more characters some more um, <clears throat> of the hierarchy and their connection to hammer hall so yep if you like zinch this is a great book for you uh the hexwood is mentioned in the zinch battle tome there's a bunch of exploration of characters heroes that are in uh the zinch battle tome itself uh it's, it's a good fleshing out of what those characters mean there's also a nice exploration of free peoples and also people that are free peoples but not so there is um an exploration of what the realms mean for free peoples which is kind of a cool thing right so if you're interested in all right so i've got some free peoples and they all look like empire from the old world what do the people that don't look like empire from the old world look like if they're free peoples true well there's some digging into that uh that goes on in this book that's pretty nice as well <laughs> i think i think too if there's if there were still any comparison between the relationship of um space marines and uh imperial guard oh, yeah. versus the relationship between stormcast and free people mm-hmm. you know exactly what that difference is and why um there's you know yeah and and we'll get to a those there'll be a quote or s- some reference uh with uh a selena sunstrike later on that that references that but there's a lot of relationship between the mortals and the immortals mm-hmm. and and what's important so well, i think one other quick point is that if you're a fan of the 40k inquisitor style novels this is not a bad transition into aos because you've got kind of an aos inquisitor with the witch hunter mm-hmm. we've got a space marine bodyguard character type as it were with the storm cast right and we've got another cast of characters so if that's something that you're interested in right like that's this kind of story for aos i, I think it's a poor comparison let's be honest but if if that's something that really pushes your buttons this might be something that's an entry into the aos fiction for you yeah it's good to know Guys, we've been, we've been beating around the bush for a while. Any other non-spoiler Should thoughts before? Should, the bush? Should we just quit? Should we just log off? It's no, con- we can log off. I'm okay with that. We, we, got, got, to, we got to go on this. We got some things to talk about. Uh, <laughs> let's let's get into our let's get into our spoilers. Um, so let me say, hey, people listening to this or watching this, if you don't want to be spoiled, turn off right now. Go read the book. Like, yeah, go, go read the book. I mean, right? I, yeah, I think I think all of us recommend it. So like. Go yes. go give it a shot and meet us back here in, in like two seconds. All right. One, two, spoilers. Lay a mommy hit me right now. Go, 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 go. So I'm never happy at the oh. end. Yeah. So. <laughs> wow. Good job. That's a great spoiler to have. Let's let's lead with that. Let's lead with a heavy spoiler. We've been talking about the Zinchian plot and what Zinch has been up to. Well uh, so so okay. real sorry, first I want to say what Josh Reynolds does <laughs> again in this book, what he does really cool next to Spirit Shadows, is we get some gods talking. Yeah. A good place to start. Hit me. We uh we get so, Sig- Sigmar is coming down strolling. He's like, ah, let me hang out in Garan for a little bit, take a little stroll. And he kind of comes around that he senses something's going on in these hex woods. He just kind of is around the periphery. Nothing can see him. And it's on a nice vacation, you know, and, just hanging out. And uh the and Alario comes blowing in as a kind of embodiment of leaves to talk to him. She she's busy elsewhere, but she's uh FaceTiming him. Uh, <laughs> and and there's just this like ah, it looks like you need some help and she's like I don't need help back off but dude if I can just you know let me it's like I this isn't any of your concern so she's she's certainly kind of more of um, there was a lost episode of Mortal Realms where we talked through the the Pantheon book oh yeah you know where the two are talking and they're talking about the old alliances like they're there's nothing right now. Like they, they are, how I put it, they are allies, be, mm-hmm. and they're going to be allies. They're, <clears throat> they're not, they're not going to. Right. I mean, it's it's on one hand, it's tenuous, but the threat of chaos is bigger than what threat either of them have towards each other. Right. So they're they're still, allies of necessity, not allies of like choice. Right. I mean. Yeah, I mean, if if there was no chaos around, they'd be fighting each other. Um, but but yeah, so there's just no there's no like obligations. There's no treaties that they're working around. Mm-hmm. It's no no treaties. Mm-hmm. Uh, nice. 
Um, so I mean, it's it's there's a real <laughs> <laughs> there's a real tension there, uh, and but it's it's just cool see in the speaking, and then it kind of prologues it. It kind of lifts up. They're like, hey, let's look at this from the highest level. What mm -hmm. are the, what are the gods concerned about? And then <laughs> let's bring it down and see what what mortal man is concerned about. Is concerned about. So that's so that's I, a fantastic I, open. Yeah, it was I like open. the. One of the on the first page, they're talking about how Sigmar is ascending through the shattered sky islands and the storm reefs. It was just, it was a real cool just image of descending into Gyran. I mean, um, dude knows how to make an entrance. Sure. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, so that was that was a real cool moment. Um, uh, and when Illyrio is embodied, it's just it, she's embodied with the living or dead plant matter, right? Like. Whereas he's kind of like all this storm and lightning and smoke and et cetera. She's just like using what's there. Um, it was it was kind of a nice touch to embody him in more of like Azir things and embody her in very much in the guy around things. That was a real cool just kind of moment. I just like the idea of like Sigmar being bored up in Azir being like, all right, well, what's going on elsewhere? I'm going to scope this out. Like I got nothing else better to do. Uh, mm -hmm. She's like, hey, man, get up out of my realm. I'm busy. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I liked it. So how how does that uh, how does that relate to the I'll say plot, and by that I mean the the Zinchian plot. What does that have to do with Zinch? Yeah. So what we've got is so what he's sensing down there. He comes down to the hex woods, mm -hmm. and what he's sensing there is that there's something amiss. Yep. And what he, what we get the picture of is that um, some of Alarial's soul pods, these mm -hmm. things of infinite potential. potential. Uh, of creation um, are have been captured and have been encased in a um, crystalline structure a flux uh, cairn a flex flux cairn what'd you call yeah, it uh, yeah that's what I call you a flux cairn deal with it uh, now and later on they talk about this as being a normal beastman thing yeah it's like a zinch herdstone basically yeah, is herdstone. what I got from it so, so they've right. encased the soul pods in a couple of some. There's a there's a shaman who's kind of in charge, um, and a whole bunch of zangors and a whole bunch of uh, kind of just the beasts, um, and they are siphoning energy. They're they're mm -hmm. they're there's a ritual going on around the herdstone uh, that's kind of blending planes. Uh, there's some ethereal astral things going on mm -hmm. uh, and they're kind of working up to a grand Scheme. there's a ritual. There's a ritual yeah. that started here and they're waiting for something to happen to kind of mm -hmm. complete the process they're, that, that they're going under. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting thing. The flux cairns are described as basically solidified magic. And the soul, pad, soul pods are contained within them. And the flux cairn is siphoning off that energy in order to feed this ritual. But, uh, uh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Uh, it's, just, it's a very interesting visual. Uh, it's a very interesting, I don't know, technical explanation of what's going on. Yeah. It, it was kind of a cool thing because we don't get many technical explanations. In AOS, it's more of this like this thing is awesome because it's a city on a worm. Isn't that awesome? That's so cool. And this is like, nope, this is exactly how it works. And like, not that I have a problem with that, but it, it was cool to have like, yep, this is exactly what it works, and this is why it works because it's zinch and it's magic, etc. So uh, they described it as crystals or prisms that were jutting out from the earth itself. Sure. And do we want to talk about to what end? Like, why would they go? All, why would they go to all this trouble? What are they after? Do you want do you want to spoil that already? <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, we're we're in we're in the spoilers. We talk, <laughs> we're talking about the plot, right? So let's let's talk about the plot to begin with. Sure, hit me. So, uh, so we, where do you want to start? You want to go inside the city? You want to go outside the city? I'm leaving. Well, we start with Hammerhall, and it kind of makes that connection of like you can see the Hexwood it, itself ish. You can see the Nevergreen Mountains from Hammerhall itself. And so what they're trying to do is they're trying to create this pathway from Hammerhall to the Hexwood. Sure. It's a really interesting way of which they're creating it. But this Flux Cairn is one of the anchors, and then uh, Rolo Tarn is integral for the other anchor that's going to try well, and figure out what's going on. And they're not just trying to get from the Hexwood to Hammerhall. They're trying to bypass the... The, the protections of Hammer Hall. The wards. They're yeah. trying to create a path from the realm of chaos through 
the hex woods which they've tainted and they're using this soul pod and then into uh in to be able to have demons appear inside of hammer hall so like um, a Zetian super highway yep um Um, Tarn, who is this industrious, um, you know, was it was this industrious free people, free person, um, mm-hmm. but when when it came time, and they, they do a little bit to humanize them a little bit, right? Yeah. They do they give oh, them a little yeah. bit of story of where like he tried to go out and be industrious and and serve the people, but he didn't get the support he needed from uh, like he was out there. Mm-hmm. his whole like he built up his business and then like his whole retinue was like murdered yeah like his whole all the people that worked for me built up this business like he had more people cutting down trees more people cutting down trees mm-hmm. and then like they were just by i think the sylvaneth was it weren't they yep yeah so he was a logger and he was doing great until he started cutting into the hexwood and then the Sylvaneth are like, uh, no, sorry. They're like Greenpeace coming in to like shut down all this, like, you know, savage of the land. And that's where Zinch spoke to him mm-hmm. and was able to kind of convince him, hey, there's, there's, I've got it. I've got something for you. I can protect you from these things. Uh, make sure that you're profitable. You just mm-hmm. got to do a few things for me. And, and it became the process of turning him to the dark side. Sure. Well, and I think one of, one of the uh, things that he talks about is that he was chased for days by these Sylvaneth that are torturing him, right? And he was on the point of madness. So to him, it might not have been a conscious choice, right? Like, I think that was kind of push that it's just like, this is absolutely a necessity. So, so he gets turned to Zinch. Um, he mm-hmm. starts becoming more uh, able to grab these Hexwoods which uh, Zinch has, has tainted over time. Uh, uh, these soul pods help him reshape the woods in Zinch's image. Um, they cut down these trees. They turn them into lumber. They bring them into the city in these airships. And then he sells them um, to... Uh, he He's able to sell them to kind of the rich part of, of you know the builders of Hammerhall, both Aksha and Garan. Um, and this tainted wood is meant to be like, think about a million planks of wood or, or beams of wood all over hammer hall. And these are the portals in which the, they're the other doorway that he's created. And so the idea is that the demons will be able to come out everywhere in hammer hall all at once. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it's, it's pretty really big uh turn <laughs> against like a whole people um yeah. it's a, it's and, a pretty uh, huge plan for one or two people as we get into sure right. and, and so it's like he's he's, he's putting this putting this plan into motion like he, he, he's i feel like they're, they're getting close to what they're trying to accomplish let's uh let's insert uh soul gauge here how does mm-hmm. how does he come into play where's he get wrapped up into this you tell me I'm the, I'm the one asking the question. Oh, okay. Uh, so Sol, so being a witch hunter, he's tracking down chaos. He gets clues. He interrogates somebody. He learns something. Uh, he 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 checks his um, trinkets and um, whatever to try and see where magic's happening. He's probably you know um, he's got he's got tools of the trade to help him kind of suss this out or spies different people around the city that are helping you know reporting things etc. And so, so Soul and his team mm-hmm. uh, are have to investigate this this Aether port, uh, and in particular, it's one of Tarn's warehouses. Um, and we've got this motley crew. We've got uh, Soul. We got Kuva, a white lion elf. We mm-hmm. got Brynn, a, mm-hmm. a hammer. Brynn is a hammer. Yep. Uh, and then we've got a Lord Veritant. Yep. What's Karis. 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 Yep. And I mean, back to that analogy, I mean, he'd be your, he would definitely be your uh, Grey Knight. Okay. Yep, he'd be your Grey uh, Knight. Chilling out with the Inquisitor. Um, he also does have a uh, Griffon Zephyr too. Yep. So he's got a Griffon with him. Um, and the Veritants are kind of the, the witch hunter side. They're the counter to the Castellant, which is, Probably the more builder defensive army side, 
so we we get veritants in uh, City of Secrets as well, or a mm -hmm. veritant. Uh, but this guy's, I think, much different. Yep. Uh, than that uh, one. Much more chill. Like yeah. Much more willing to not take the lead, right? Like he's not somebody to purge the heretic. He's somebody sure. to uh, tell me where to go, and I will take care of it. Yeah, much right? more willing to not like decimate an entire city and like yeah. <laughs> genocide <laughs> and across the race. And where the cr where the team from Spear of Shadows would just kind of like get to know each other, these guys from the get go, you get a sense that they've worked together a few times. Mm -hmm. Like they're not necessarily the Avengers, right? Yeah. Where they're always working together, but they've mm -hmm. crossed each other's paths. They've worked together before. It, when yep. they're in the city, or it seems like Kuva can come and go, but when she's around, she's helping out, she's doing stuff, she's working with okay. them, uh, yeah. et cetera. Um, yeah, so I mean, and, and and we make a point of that. There's a backstory of these guys, like why exactly they're working together or how they yeah. came into employ or who sent which one. But I think it seems to me like Soul is just called in favors. Sure, He's like, yeah. okay, I know a couple people. I know this person's in town. I know Kuva's, I mean, she's, I need Kuva. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> in fact, and, I'm not, not going to do this until I have Kuva. I'll wait. Yeah, yeah, I'll wait. Yeah. Uh, and, and then kind of assembles that team, figures it out, you know, gets to the docks. They, you know, put out, they put out a bunch of people's lights, a lot of guards. They knock them out mm -hmm. just so that they don't know what's going on. There's a little subterfuge. Uh, That's really they, nice. Uh, introduction though to the characters I find uh, I found that uh, it's the exploration of the docks which is a really cool setting for me right because it's hammer hall but it's above hammer hall is are these ether docks and as you were kind of describing these concentric circles that's basically the ether docks so it's all above the city itself uh, so that was a real cool way to kind of introduce it they have these little guards that are trying to defend things and then they introduce the characters as they're coming up on problems uh, that they need to address, right? They're trying to get to the warehouse, but there's this guard and there's this other guard and everything needs to be taken care of in order. So they introduce the characters as they're doing that. Um, and it was, it was it allowed each character to have an entrance, which is a real fun thing that you don't yeah. necessarily get, right? Yeah. It's not like, oh, we're at the tavern and here's the adventuring party. It's like, <laughs> nope, these are the two guys that are showing up. It's going to be Sol and Karis. Oh, and there's this guy, Bryn. Oh, and there's this girl, Kuva. Oh, and, you know, like, it, it was going on to introduce uh, the, the party itself, and it made them feel like more of they had been working with each other because they just did what they're supposed to do. Yeah. You saw them when they were done with their job. There was, yeah. there was, there was a sense of coordination. Yes. Like, they had a plan. Mm -hmm. And Sol is definitely the ringleader for that plan. Yeah. Yeah, right? which, like, is, which is cool, because he's the youngest. <laughs> he's the human. Yeah. Uh, and we get a bunch of you know elves, storm Immortal, cast, yeah, yeah, Dwarden, and and he's earned their respect or, or you know for his order or whatever uh, mm -hmm. as a knight of his ear um, to command, kind of command the the, the troop. So it, that's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, um, and they've got to get. So they decide that, and there's a there's a quote early on with I believe it's Kuna. We're like, what should we do here? And she's like, just burn it down. Yeah, like she. <laughs> She doesn't want it. Like, why spend a lot of time? Yeah, and same thing with Bryn. Up yeah. to burn it down. Yeah, uh, or was that Bryn's? Uh, it was both of them. Kuva's like, like, burn it down. Bryn's like, yeah, burn it down. And Sol's like, all the other witch hunters would totally burn it down, but I'm totally not like that. <laughs> it's I'm it's, not like, <laughs> like it's weird because those two probably live longer than than Sol for exactly. sure. Exactly. Yeah. Like, no, like, no, we ain't got time for this. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I like to. I like that Kuva wasn't kind of restricted to the class that she is, as it were, right? Like it, it, they introduced her. This is what she looks like. This is the weapon that she has, right? But like that wasn't her character. That was a really cool aspect of it, um, especially as we get later on in the book, and they're talking about flying. Um, and she was like, "Oh, I forgot how much fun flying was. It's really cool, right?" Like it. It wasn't just like, "Oh, I'm a white lion and I do what white lions do." Because I look like a white lion, it was like, sure. nope, I'm actually this character, and this character is kind of cool. Have we had any other white lions? Um, not since the end times that I'm aware of. No, I think right. so. Uh, Corhill, but you know that was the end times, so we're not we're not in the end times. No, we're uh, not. Well, we haven't had that. So I mean, to me, that was a little bit of a. I mean, if, I think I've read a little bit of the white lion fluff, and and they're kind of a savage elf. Plan yeah. right. I mean, they're they're not 
prim and proper. They're not the high elves that you think of, right? They're, yeah. um, you know, kind of trophy driven and, and skill driven. Forest. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, so these guys, so Kuba's kind of, which is, it, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's a, a thing you got to change in your head too, a little bit from the old world for sure. But also like white lions are typically dressed in white. They've got big lion pelts. They've got a, mm -hmm. it's an elf with a giant ax, which people have like, what? That isn't, that's not a trope that's anywhere else. Um, nope. You know, so it it does it never fit to a lot of tropes, uh, and yep. now in this case, for them to be kind of a stealthy, um, kind of hunter type, mm -hmm. is really interesting. So, yeah. uh, but it's it's a cool, it's a cool style to fit into the story. I think. Yeah. Sure. Well, and and Bryn kind of departs from the class as well. Uh, you know, he's a hammer, but he's got these two Drake fire pistols, right? And like, so he acts a lot and he fights a lot like soul does because soul's got these two pistols and he's got this knife right but bryn's got these two pistols and he's got this hammer so they have very similar fighting styles um but he's got an interesting background as well of like oh yeah who knows how long he's been around and he's a hammer but there's no king and he's not protecting the king even if there was one so what's going on with his backstory yeah. so it's, it's a little bit of mystery which was a, a cool addition as well sure um i, I think it was on the interview with Kenny on um, its combat phase podcast, but uh, Reynolds was talking about spear shadows and not, not about this specifically, but uh, he was saying that uh, GW, I think told him, or he, he got the impression what he needed to do was actually create a, a group of just a wide range of the different, and I hate to say it like this, but like the, the wide range of models that they happen to sell so that you can get different perspectives from their different roles. And so that was yep. spear shadows. I, I feel like this is just a continuation of that where, yeah. This is an opportunity to take a look at what a real um, a real life version of a hammer or is, a real life version of a white lion is, and throw them all together and sort of see what that interaction looks like, how they exist in the world, what they're doing. Now, it's a great way to sort of port the, the you know the, the eighth edition models into this setting um, and really cement they're not compendium, but sort you know the, the the older models in this this new setting. So I I, I love. Uh, the the combining of these different roles and the the teamwork sort of interacting between the two of them, um, it, it's a great way to accomplish that. Absolutely. Yeah, I I very much love that as well. Uh, I like that it's it allows you to have kind of a touchstone of like this is what the model looks like, right? But then to depart from the touchstone and be okay with the fact that it's a departure, right? In the yeah. old world, it was almost impossible to do that because you're like, no, these are what these guys do and this is what it is. In AOS, it's much more like, no, I can make an adventuring party out of whoever I want to because I think they would work cool together and this is how they work cool together and this is great. That's true. Right? Like, I mean, uh, Bryn is still wearing the Kozilid armor. He still has the Kozilid war cries, right? But, like, he's not actually part of the part of the Dwarden force anymore. It, it, it's cool. And after reading this, I mean, I got to say, I want to play Hammerhall, uh, Silver <laughs> yeah. Tower. I want a Lord Veritant. Uh He doesn't have any rules in Silver Tower or any of the the Warhammer quests. Um, but I mean, like tromping through uh, the city with this, you know, band of misfits, um, just mm -hmm. seems like a lot of fun. Yeah, you know, it almost um, like so you play a skirmish in. and just kind of recruit these characters and play a skirmish game with them, like that. What were you saying, Aaron? Oh, well, just because it, it almost is like a. a, a Warhammer Quest like campaign in a yep. in a way actually, uh yeah you've got you've got kind of a you've got a warehouse kind of you know dungeon and you've got sure. the the woods, um so they they bust into they this warehouse, and uh, they find nothing except for stacks of wood, and mm -hmm. obviously we've talked about what that wood is but they don't know this yet at all, yeah and what they find is that they've been uh, there's a trap laid for them by some acolytes, mm -hmm. um so that. Wearing the gold bird masks, yeah, and the uh, you know in this space, and they start fighting against a uh, changeling, right? A cursling. Cursling, changeling, yeah, cursling. Like, cur yep. changeling's the dude. So yep. changeling is the specific okay. character. We don't have that right now. Uh, so it, it's the cursling. Uh, so you know, big hulking monster of a zinch, uh, warrior, um, and uh, we find out later is the son of Tarn, <laughs> who's been uh, warped and changed by zinch. Um, and he comes up and starts wailing them. You got acolytes. You got things burning. You've got uh, um, kind of the the wood starts gibbering mm -hmm. and As changing. Wood does. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And, no. 
Yep. And so there's, and this happens after some of the, the progress is made, but the, you know, this is kind of the environment they're in. Um, and, and they really have to kind of, it's, it's a trap that they've fallen into and they've got to get their self, they get themselves out of it. Um, after, you know, a lot of smashing of demons and, and that sort of thing. Uh, and they got to make it out of there. I don't know if we want to keep going down that path or if we want let's to put switch a, back. Let's put a pin in it. What's going on pin. outside uh, the city walls? I mean, because this yeah. is all ha- sort of happening one, currently. Let's, uh, let's no, can I have to mention one quick detail that I really enjoyed? No. Okay. Uh, only because you really enjoyed it. Yeah. So in the very beginning when they have the little watchman mm-hmm. and it falls apart because it's all full of like rust and or moss, so they have this lava moat. They still can't keep all the life out because everything grows into moss or vines, et cetera, right? Mm. But when they walk into the warehouse, none of the wood has been affected whatsoever. It all looks completely natural. So it was a real nice foreshadowing of being like, self has not changed. Something is wrong here, right? This is the only place that isn't rotting. Yep. It's a cool piece of foreshadowing. Yeah. I mean, you're absolutely right. Uh, well, and I, I didn't get that quite as rotting as much as like, spores would land on people and start growing plants like it was a very yeah. again the the um the verdant yeah yeah so i mean it was, it was more life affirming than it was like rot not like a life cycle yeah but let's 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 talk about the life the vegetation or basically just the realm at large when we uh, look through the eyes of serena outside the city gates out in the wilds following gardas fighting zeech dudes wow what are they up to out there? What what what's their part to play in this? Well, uh, they started out with, oh, by the way, all the Stormcast have left the city because they're going out to go address this threat, right? And this threat is in the Hexwood. We're we're going back to where Sigmar had uh, mentioned that he, right, hadn't asked for help. Turns out. They had been helped by these uh, locals. Um, so they had these local lumbermen, uh, villagers, I don't know exactly what you would call them, tribesmen, maybe. Denizens of the realm of life. Um, yeah, uh, that had made it known that help is needed. They show up with the Stormcast, they show up with the Free Peoples, uh, and they go to eradicate this threat, as it were. Um, so th- we basically enter the story as they're walking into the Hexwood and they're going to go ambush and take out this Zinjian cult that has taken root. Um, and they have uh, Verdians, as they call them, the local people showing them the way. But then they also have the free people um, that are mostly from Azir, but then they also have this combination of, because of the attrition, they're also from um, the realm of life. And there's also some people also there from the realm of fire. Uh, so it's this whole conglomeration of everyone f- working together to fight off the the cult of change. Sure. Yeah. So. And 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 I guess how how do they do that? To what end? Like, wh- wh- what are they faced with? Uh, they're basically just faced with uh, an ambush of. The, like ambush after ambush after ambush after yeah. ambush. You expect anything twisty, less as it were. Yeah. And beastmen. Yeah. So they're just walking through the woods and all of a sudden there's beastmen. Right? Like, okay, whatever. You, you kill the beastmen, they go away. Meh, 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 right? And then they're ambushed by the freaking trees. Yeah. Right? Like, this was a cool, kind of interesting thing. So the flamers come out, they set fire to the trees, and then all of a sudden the trees start wailing on the storm cast and wailing on the free peoples because they've been transmuted into chaos. So, I mean, it is, it's a very AOS thing to be like, nope, the trees are just chaos tainted now. And they're literally just using their leaves, using their roots, using their trunks to just flatten everything in, in sight. That new Nurgle tree model could definitely be converted to a zine right? tree. Could totally. The story. You, so, would, you would never. They're would mortal enemies. Do it. Um, but yeah, you you get, you just get wave after wave and you get, you get to see, you know, how the liberators fare. You get to see, you get flamers in there. So you've got, you know, people getting burned. You got judicators coming in to save the day. Um, you've got, and then all of a sudden, you know, Gardas 
and his retinue of of um, retributors compounding in and and smashing through things. You've got don't forget the impertinent maiden. You guys, uh, you guys remember her? Oh yeah, of course. Uh, so again, uh, so this is uh, <laughs> this is one of the uh, what is it? the Iron Weld Arsenal that came along. It's one of the oh, what's it called? Steam tank. Is it a steam tank? I thought it was one no, of the no, no. guns. Oh no, the uh, the yeah, right, not steam tank. Rocket battery. Rock, uh, Hell blaster. Hell. Mm. One of them. I didn't, never played Empire, Paul so I was bad at this. Paul, Paul would know, but he's dead now. So. <laughs> um, and so this is just this kind of a multi-barreled gun uh, that mows down some things from time to time. Uh, but unfortunately, in come the the skyfires and the enlightened. They always do. Uh, and uh, it's time to just murderize some things. So they come in, they take out kind of the couple of people on the hell blaster thing. And it, it gets uh, the beast that's the, the beast of burden that's hauling it around gets kind of like, oh, I'm out of here. Um, and uh, you know, you get some really cool interactions with. So there's this, uh, one of them is the, this shaman. It isn't the main shaman. I don't, no, it's the, the, the one that was talking to him. Yeah, uh, yeah. So it's Tarn's a uh, kind of connected um, coven brother, or sure. coven Zangir. Whatever. It's Zangir. Uh, it's, it's, it's like worst name. Like, come on, there's Zangor. Well, Zinch Gairan. It's a, it's a shorthand for Zinch Gairan. Oh, I see what you're saying. But I mean, it's like so close right? to Zangor. Like, might as well call yeah, like it like Kleenex. Um, <laughs> And, Clean and uh, Clean Ox. Clean Ox. Um, so, but he comes cruising out. He's the one who kind of beheads the the Hell Blasters um, crew. Um, but then Gardas comes in, uh, kind of, well, you know, kind of takes him off his disc, um, and uh, he comes down, and they exchange some blows. Uh, but instead of Gardas taking him down. He kind of just paves the way, like he distracts him for a little bit. And one of these uh, free peoples, and and it's cool, like you said, they describe them as, like some of them are super tattooed. Like these aren't these aren't your your, uh, your freely, Middenheims, yeah. uh, free peoples. Oh, absolutely not. <clears throat> and he so this guy sneaks up on the the shaman and stabs him right in the back, and then like cripples him, and then all the other free people get to come in and tear him apart. And Gardas is like, this is the like I'm giving them. Let them have this. This is their win, right? Well, um, there was a real cool moment there. I don't know if you caught it, right? The people from the realm of fire. Did you catch that? Hit the realm of fire. So there are people from the realm of fire. So the first guy comes up and he stabs him in the back as Gardas distracts him. Zangor, Zangir, I should say, turns around and stabs him with his his uh, his dagger. The free people from Akshi dissolves into ash. He had a real cool death. And I'm like, oh, that's a different way for someone to die. I just right? assume, it wasn't I like oh. that was a, a Zinchian thing, like transmuting but the body into something weird. Actually, I don't know. It, like, it might be, but it still was, it was a cool moment to be like, this guy who was specifically from Akshi sacrificed himself and that was a theme that was going on in the whole story right like were sacrificing of themselves and the people from zinch were sacrificing of others right that's where the whole son came in he was sacrificing his son mm -hmm. right and the order was more sacrificing themselves for other people well let's let's touch there for a minute because one of the kind of leaders of the free people older gentleman with a peg leg super you know yeah. in in our terms battle hardened um but uh selena remembers when he was young and brown you know had no gray hairs um she talks about you know fighting with him for a long time and she's been the same and we talked about this has been a hundred years since this has been a hundred years since gardas came to the mortal realms let alone you know or left azir right so he's a hundred years old straight up um or more because there's time before uh, Gates of Azir, but straight up, <laughs> straight up over a hundred years. Um, mm -hmm. And but then you know there's this this moment when 
um, you know, this idea of sacrifice mm -hmm. and that the Stormcast, in, in her view, you know, are there, they were made so that the mortals wouldn't have to die. It's and, a real cool moment, yeah. And the idea that that seeing some of these the lives of these humans snuffed out and it being permanent made her sick. Yeah, um, had a real effect on her. <laughs> yeah, um, and and you know the same kind of. There's just so much respect for of the the people, the humans, the mortals yep. by the the Stormcast, um, and that they're. That they're, the, you know, and we saw that in Gates of Azir. Like these are these people are the reason the Stormcasts are here. Um, that mm -hmm. prior to being reforged, these these people that were forged as Stormcast fought to protect their people, and now they have opportunity yeah. to continue to do that and protect other people. Um, and so there's what just there's a, that. I mean, that just comes really strong through this. Mm -hmm. One of the interesting things is that Creel is that that character's name um, is that he's an Azerite. Right, and he's fighting in Garan, and there's a moment where they're talking with one of the Verdians, which is Shale, and they're having this fight, right? Because the Azerite, of course, is a follower of Sigmar, and Shale is the follower of uh, Alariel, yeah. right? And so they have this whole like kind of difference going on, and then you've got, I think his name is Hryn, which is one of the guys from Akshi, right? Like you've got all these different perspectives going on, and they're showing that there's tension between what's going on and what's you know, how it's being resolved themselves as saviors, right? So like even within the free people, the Azerites are like, I came and saved you being absolutely destroyed. You should be really thankful that I'm coming to save you, right? Yep. And Shale is one of the Verdians and the Verdians is, are like, look, you shut your gates and we had to survive with what we had. We have. What, what's cool about that dynamic is that, you know, in the end, n neither of them have a leg up on the other. Sure. Right. No. Nope. So there's a there's a cool balance there between the the gate shutting and the you know coming back to rest. You like, eh, you like, know, like you, you don't get absolved necessarily. You yeah. Can't. Do you do you get credit for coming to save me when it was your fault that I need? I, in a right. way, yeah. your fault. I needed to be saved in the first place. I mean, they didn't have stormcast. Well, and that. So. Yeah, and that's made really clear by the fact that the Azrites are like, "I've come to save you," and the Verdians are like, "Yeah, where do you go to save us?" <laughs> Right, because that becomes a key part of the plot. Is like, oh, oh I'm gonna call it, totally come and save you, and then where do I go to come and save you? And the Radians are like, okay, you need to actually go over here. And if you have all the power in the world, if you don't know where you're going to use that power, it's basically useless. So there is it's a really interesting thing. And then the actually where the people that actually killed the Zinch, which apparently there's some history there or something, right? So kill every I said, what? kill the Zinch. The Exactly. So a point for where they belonged in the plot. It wasn't like, oh, look, that we've got these people from different perspectives and they're all here because people die. And isn't it fun that everybody's from a different place? They've got different motivations too, right? They've, they worship different gods. They have different ways of fighting. They have different ways of dressing. Like, especially the people from Akshi, it's like, okay, you look really cool. You have a really interesting way of actually fighting. They basically just seemed like, um, what are the, the, uh, Eternal Guard, opposite the Wildwood Rangers, I think. Yeah. For the yeah, but but humans, yeah. right? Like they have this kind of like fur thing going on, and they've got these bows, and it, it said, okay, you're free guild, but you're still not the same people. Like you're gonna fight in different ways, you're gonna fight for different reasons. It, it was a real nice exploration of that, even in, and for a short story, I was really impressed to have that kind of detail put into it. We haven't had that yet with the free people. Usually it's just been like, oh, they're all empire, you know, and the, and now it's like, no, this is not what they are. Very good point. Very good. Point. So they they have to push in. They so they they, you know, kill this uh, shaman. All of the forces of Zinch kind of regroup, and the the Gardas decides to take a small force to get to the heart of the matter, while the regular force stays there to to make it look like nothing's changed is this the point is this the point where their zinch really isn't we, they don't know that they're regrouping like the first first pass they think that they're they're boogieing out of there right 
So this is after the so in in close to the end the sh- after the shaman is killed. Okay. Yeah, after the trees have attacked, after the, the shaman is killed. So now they're like, okay, we've got to figure out what else is going on. Sure, exactly. The, so the, go ahead. No, just generally, it, it's they're they're not out of the they're not out of the woods yet, so to speak. Just taking down the shaman doesn't mean <laughs> that the. Uh, that their their mission is complete because the ritual is still going and we kind of transition back to the docks at this point and they intended to have the ritual going on the warehouse but they can't do that anymore because the warehouse is being taken over by this adventuring party as it were so they decide to go and attack the ship because they realize that the ship is the key to everything um but not all of them can get to the ship um but they jump onto, so they have Karis and they have Soul themselves and trying to figure out exactly what's going on. Um, and this isn't the first appearance of Ake, uh, but this is a real interesting character, AEK, um, who is a fate master by the side of Rolo Tarn. Now, and, is, he, is he the the guy that we, so this was, it was a little confusing to me because uh, Rolo Tarn had been talking to a dude, and mm. I thought it was Ake, but I got the impression that he was—he looked more like a, an old Lord of Change. So Zangir is the half of his soul, is half of Rolo Tarn's soul. They did this pledge where if he dies, the other person doesn't necessarily die because they split their souls. So most of what the conversation had was between Zangir and Rolo Tarn, figuring out exactly how the plot is going to work. Well, so th- is what's called a fate master. So the model that is the fate master is the old metal, uh, yeah. the Zinch Lord on disc. So I didn't think so that I didn't think that Tarn and Zangir talked that much. Most mm-hmm. of the dialogue that Tarn was when he was expositioning was with Ake. Yeah, yeah, that's you're the right. Impression yeah. I got. But right. the impression I got was that he was more bird-like, uh, and until they said he was a fate master and then it changed i was like went to that old model well, and just i was like well, yeah it doesn't mean he looks like the model as a fate master he could be a bird like well, fate master and, and the other thing it seems like i mean he's a he's a zinch he can change right yeah. um so yeah. I, I wasn't well he sure. could be the plastic plan pack with the bird legs or he could so be my, you know like there's a lot my, of options for him to look like question specifically was though did you guys remember him de- being described more bird like or lord of change like or was did you, what was your picture in your head for him? Uh, when they said what he was, um, I looked up the model, and I, in my head, he's the model, not the bird like it. Okay. Honestly, to me, he looked a little bit more like a sword master, like a high elf sword master, but Zinjian, right? Because it said he had a high pointed helm, and he had, the and he had a plume, and he had the sword, right? So, like, it was a two handed halberd, but like that was more of the picture that I got of the character. Oh, was that what it was a halberd instead? It, it was like a, it was a two-handed something. It might have been a sword, but it was more of a yeah. Um, and he was an awesome character. Yeah, just, I'm, I'm gonna leave it at that. Like, yeah. But uh, there's this whole fight on the deck of the airship itself, and then they figure out that the deck is not where they actually need to be heading. Before Kuva and Bryn <laughs> ram the airship with the sky cutter. What? As as Bryn singing some like Kozalid song, uh, and then Ake and Karis get into this huge duel on the deck of the ship, and Toll is like, "All right, this isn't actually the point. He's just delaying us." So he goes underneath and he finds the actual ritual, and he sees these. It was, that was a cool kind of description. He sees these bubbles of reality, as it were, popping up from the inside of the ritual, showing. All the places in Hammer Hall where demons are showing up hmm. that was tainted, that were or blessed, as Rolo Tarn calls it. <laughs> Vision any, of Hammer Hall. Has any main character in the history of fiction ever rolled up on a uh, a ritual being performed and they didn't need to interrupt it every single time? Like, <laughs> like tomorrow, if you roll into a, a conference room and there's a ritual going on, you better believe you got to interrupt that thing, man. I mean, Indiana Jones. Temple of Doom. I mean, did he interrupt that? He didn't. So, he actually got his. Oh no, he. He sh- well, if he didn't, he should have. He should have. Because we see a hard here. I'm gonna go to the deep cut and say Malekith. There was a ritual where he could enter the Phoenix Temple, and he wasn't supposed to interrupt it, and he did. Sure, I'm just saying, like there, every there ritual. Has a, 
there's never been a ritual that someone didn't roll up on and immediately interrupt. Hmm. <laughs> a little, a little cliche. I'm gonna say that's that's a definite never. Carry on. Um, <laughs> yeah. What I so what uh, I, so I thought this was a really cool. I mean, so you you get to the ritual. Um, I loved the fight up top. I loved that the Fate Master was pushing wind around. I loved that. Um, Kala, Karis, Canis, Karis, uh, the, yes. the Veritant was mm-hmm. matching them blow for blow, um, that they were fighting kind of just, and everybody else was, the, it was cool that the, the witch, um, hunter, um, soul was talking about how as a witch hunter, you often find yourself over, uh, outnumbered. Sure. And so there's ways of fighting to, that was a cool um, moment to make the, the, their numbers work against them. So, mm-hmm. you know, slashing, you know, uh, uh, tendons and and cutting you know little bits and just disabling so that they have to f- that they fall down and they're tripping over each other each you know way. yep and they're they're punching each other instead of you know so there's a very like uh, on one hand i was thinking of like a little bit of drunken boxer yeah. uh martial <laughs> drunken, arts um, yeah. but not, but more like you know maybe a little more tai chi or something like that to where it's like you know people are stumbling over each other to try and get at you and you're just kind of evading and slipping and darting and stabbing and you know that sort of thing. So, uh, but yeah. that was a really cool and kind of character building minute. Well, and and, and I I think one of the things that I kind of skipped over that I think was really worth talking about is this airship, right? So the airship sure. is basically a full on river galley, and opulent, etc. Having sails, it had green gas bags, as it were, mm-hmm. the collegiate arcane that were on it that allowed it to fly. And that was one of the cool things that was reminded of when you were talking about the the Fate Master and he was swinging his, or is that because he was messing with the wind, the ship couldn't get away, right? It kept rocking back and forth because the fighting on the deck of Ake himself was actually preventing the forward momentum Mm -hmm. of the ship from really kind of getting to where it was. And there was also a cool moment where they're fighting above the city and they've got this whole vertigo thing going on in the green uh, sky. Um, it was a real cool moment when the sky cutter came in. So that was it was cool. Yeah. So uh, we get we get our two That's characters that we left on the docks came uh, flying in in a in a swift talk uh, sky cutter. Um, now they didn't mention the bird at all. I just say was it being pulled? Well, so that's the thing is like they didn't. Uh, they did not. They didn't mention the bird at all. So I don't know if there's a new way that you can fly sky cutters. Without birds, uh, but they just smashed that thing straight yeah. into the hole. They're, They're like, like it's a sky cutter. cutter. They're like it's a reinforced hull. It's just cutting into the side of the ship. Yeah. So that was a pretty cool moment of just battering ram. You know, if they'd been like three feet, like if they'd come up underneath it, Dunsies problem solved. Oh. Yeah, Dunsies. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so but they joined the fray. Um, and and what's what's interesting here is is this main battle between these two mm-hmm. big hulks, right? The the tanks um, really needed to end mm-hmm. because the only one who could take care of the ritual, who could stop the ritual, is Karis. was Karis because yep. his his powers, his staff, you know, his lantern, uh, him saying a prayer of some sort uh, was the only thing that was going to to fix that. Uh, also, to mention at this time, the ritual is happening here. The ritual is still happening back in the hexwood. That that's the bridge that they're trying to build, uh, and it's mm-hmm. and and at this point they've gotten far enough along that demons are pulling, trying to pull themselves out of the wood, uh, are trying to you know escape, are coming out. They're they're create, causing their own trouble. They're not too bad. Like in the warehouse, they were a little more. There's more of them on the ship. There's not as many of them, but they're still they're being annoying. Uh, and and you know that that pink horde turning into blue horde is turning into. Um, mm-hmm. That was uh, a cool Brimstones moment. was definitely was definitely uh, there a, a number of times. So. I like the idea yeah. of like people having to fight for their lives. And Eric, you think it's just annoying, like oh shucks, these dumb horrors popping out. Well, and that's the thing though is that they the the pink orders never posed that much of a threat mm-hmm. in their like single numbers. Like it was always like just one popped out. True. Was a, was a little annoying. Yeah. And then uh, you know I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna see you fight. I'm gonna see you fight a pink horde. Oh, Oh no no! This is fantasy. <laughs> sure, <laughs> these are these are talented, skilled fighters. Sure, and true, to true. them, 
the pink horror was annoying. Just a slight mm-hmm. nuisance. Um. Well, and that was a that's kind of an interesting plot point. You talked to Eric about the fact that there were less horrors on the ship, and that was because Karis had planted his uh, his lantern yep. on the ship itself, so it's preventing the demons from actually manifesting. Uh, and then they're, he's fighting Ake, and the because of the sky cutter coming in, it weakened the boat, and then Ake and Karis fall down into the ritual itself. Uh, and uh, they have this whole distraction, and Rolo Tarn gets thrown into the fire, uh, basically taken out, uh, and then uh, Karis is able to get the upper hand, dives into the flames himself as a, a way of escape, <clears throat> and then they yeah, get his was... lantern from the top. Well, that's so, crazy. He, yeah, he like goes into the fire and like disappears, whereas yep. Tarn goes through the fire and is burned it alive. Freaking consumed, yeah. Uh, but the reason that he had the lantern there was because they had to preserve the boat, Karis, to be able to disrupt the ritual. Because mm. it wasn't enough to kill them, right? Like, the ritual is enacted. Yeah. He needed to counteract the ritual itself. Yeah, they, I mean, so they'd yeah. gotten far enough along to where all the acolytes were, like, just burning. Yeah, like, exactly. They, they were, you know, there was nothing like, to stop anymore. Yeah, and that wasn't stopping it. Funniest, so he, he, funniest line, though, was, like... Um, so Soul was like, uh, they were they were like so they, Soul and uh, Kuna and um, Bryn had jumped in to help, uh, Karis, and he was pretty miffed about that, and they knew he was going to be miffed about that, and they they were like, you know what, we got to still got to do it, and <clears throat> they go and and Soul says to to Karis, he's like, you have to stop the ritual, nobody else can do it. He's like, well, if we do this, this, and this. Uh, you know, uh, then we can stop. And he's like, "Can you do it?" He's like, "If I couldn't, I would have suggested something else." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a great line. He's like, "Yeah." <laughs> so, so yeah. there's some there's some humor in there uh, from him. It was pretty good. So, so basically, uh, Kara stands in the middle of the circle, plants his lantern, and just goes full on Gardas and becomes luminescent and just goes crazy uh and then they have or everybody else gets off the airship on these leaf boats that, huge leafs that like that float down drift ships drift ships yeah there you go um that was really cool this idea that there's these like the the lifeboats of these airships are these giant leaves that have been um kind of crafted in such a way that they'll hold a number of you know a few people and they just I just float that stuff back down to the earth. That is amazing. That's just when in a, cool when idea. In Rome, when in Rome, or I'm sorry, when in Gyron, hammer home. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that was a cool drop in. So, um, so, so the, the ritual is is done on the ship. Yep, Karis has planted his lantern, and this light starts going through these pathways. Uh, Pathway yeah. to super highway through Axwood. Into the realm of chaos, lantern is sending these ears light through the well, pathways. Be- before we un- before we know that though, we go back to the hexwood. Mm-hmm. Gardas and Serena and the others are pushing in. Mm-hmm. They manage to just like destroy this am- another ambush waiting for them, yep. just by toppling these these you know uh, boulders. That was- and- and yeah, so. there was a cool moment. They're in a ravine and they just start smashing the walls of the ravine and basically yeah. like, oh, this was a ravine. Now it's a veil. Um, but they break in and they find this uh, flux cairn. They find this ritual going on. They're like, okay, we've got to stop this. Um, they're battling, battling, battling. Selena gets too close to the the flux cairn and starts here. Like, I th- now earlier on when Zangir was near the flex here and it would almost like he'd want to just drift away into kind of the, the consciousness of it. Right. Um, yep. So she gets into it and she's, he, she's seeing all the stuff. She's seeing all the weirdness, but she's also then hearing the voices of the soul pods deep yeah. inside. It's calling to her to rescue them. They beat down a few more things. They kill the kind of uh, a few more beasts and and whatnot that stumble in and try and, and get at it. Um, and uh, if, is there anyway? But and then uh, um, I can't remember if she's attacked by another shaman. Yes, she is. There's three shamans. So there's 
there's the shaman that was in the first battle, and then there's this third shaman. He's kind of more of like just basically an, an enlightened, I think. Uh, but he does is mentioned as having uh, some kind of spear defense, as it were, right? Yeah. Um, and he but she mounts this but she, Yeah, and so I mean, it's it's not much. I mean, it's they basically take out everybody else that's left um, and kind of mm -hmm. stamp, you know. And and at that moment, the soul pods burst into the air, and mm -hmm. they start like pew pew pew. Um, the shooting, kind of healing all the woods around uh, that 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 flux cairn. Well, I'm sorry, they, you glitched out. What do they do? The pew pew pew. Oh, sure, okay, gotcha. Uh, <laughs> but then, from, because this is done now, all of the sylvaneth that have been like sitting on the outskirts, just waiting, just waiting, waiting the whole time. They just come in and they um they pounce. They they. they take out that enlightened that you were talking about. They they get in the fray finally. They're not happy. I lied. They're not no. happy. No. But, but, but vengeance is theirs. Sort of. <laughs> and only theirs. <laughs> so um and and so both ends of the, the ritual have been um kiboshed. Mm -hmm. Uh we've got uh, a completion of the circuit uh of yeah. Azir Light. Uh and uh or breaking of the circuit as you would um and we are left with ache so there is actually one cool there's two cool moments here so the three soul pods mm -hmm. right okay. they're not like oh these are all potential one of them is like specifically like fungal one of them is specifically you know like more about actual leaves etc like they're actually three different, even though they're immensely like these. They're three specific identities, which I thought was kind of a cool idea. Um, but the other thing is that Serena <clears throat> comes out, and right before we get to the whole ache moment, she comes out, and one of the treekin, as it, as it, he mentions them, comes out and touches her chest plate, and her armor. So instead of being marks of Sigmar, she starts to get runes of Alariel on it, which is a real interesting and very, you know, yep. <clears throat> and she ends up talking to Gardas, and Gardas is like, yep, he repeats this whole thing of like, everybody needs to be able to fight, because otherwise all the realms would be lost, right? Uh, so it's this real interesting note where she saves the soul pods, and she becomes a stormcast that now is branded with Alariel's. Yep. Which uh, is which is a very, very cool moment. I mean, back to that tension between um, you know, Sigmar and Alariel, their mm -hmm. servants are definitely finding their ties. You know, yep. we've got um, Lord Grimm, Lord Castellan Grimm, who now has a re remade hand from Garand Magic. Um, and yep. now we've got um which I, you know, I'm surprised that he's not not around more, because I I feel like through the Realmgate Wars, Gardas he Gardas kind of took a backseat to to Grim, uh, Grim really mm -hmm. kind of took the ball over the finish line. Sure. Um, but then yeah, Serena has now been um you know life touched. Um, yeah. Which is yeah, which is just a cool, cool connection in way of saying hey they're tied together. Sure. I'm um, the, Hall trend. the Hallowed Knights are definitely in with the Sylvaneth. Well, and there was a, there was also a cool moment because she lost her helmet, so she's fighting like without a helmet, sword. So she ends up getting the sword from Gardas. So like, awesome two handed sword and no shield. So like, even as her position, she's fighting as something completely different. So you know, if you were to make a miniature of that specific moment, she would be. And I'm sure you have. Um, I I'm I have an extra anger ad, so I really want to. So I was looking at it, being like, "Oh, how exactly would I do this?" So I, I think, cool moment. yeah, I think she'd be cool as a knight questor, with that new, uh, you know, Celestine sword and uh, and a new cool new shield or something. Yeah, it, it's That's got a real bad. interesting uh, dynamic to the way that it looks now. Because I was when I was reading it, it's like, "Oh, it's a liberator," so it's Angrad, but instead of a hammer, she has a uh, you know a sword. That's well, I mean, you got to be careful that. that I mean, you gotta be careful that just because she's a girl doesn't mean she's Ingrid, you know, like uh or, a liberator. Oh no, Ingrid's you're right from the I was thinking um 
Nave. I thought you were talking about Nave, but no, you're right. Ingrid yeah. is a liberator. So Ingrid is a liberator, but she's got a hammer. And if you give her a shield instead, it's like okay. But then yeah. if you if she gets this other cool sword, right? Like there's yeah. an actual conversion opportunity there, which seems my, like it'd be, my, it'd be really Ingrid, cool. My Ingrid has a sword. Nice. So she could be Selena. What? Serena. Already converted her. Where's Already the picture? Done. I'm disappointed in you now. Uh, it's on Twitter. I posted it yesterday. <laughs> Game set match, um, but yeah, so uh, but yeah, that was definitely cool. Let me get cool this aspect, ache. kind of that connection, uh, and then yeah, mm-hmm. Ake, kind of he pops out of the fire into a different warehouse inside a hammer hall, uh-huh. and he's kind of yep, like on the riverbank. Well, that's that. I probably would have. Sh- I mean, there was a slim chance I made it out of that fire, but hey, look, the Zinch isn't done with me yet, um, mm-hmm. and uh, his kind of acolytes are there they take him to tarn and tarn is just a melted mess of metal and flesh um and he's you know you know he's sad that things didn't happen but one of the things they always they talked about over and over is that zinch even plans for failure yeah Uh, um so like they're all along even from the beginning they're like well i might not succeed yeah they don't there's not like a succeeding is their only path to corruption you know yep um and they come in and have a visit they have a um talk a heart kinda, to heart. yeah the ache has been with him by his side for a long time and you know sorry that this didn't work out um and and um he died tarn dies and mm-hmm. ache is kind of like all right uh you know and there's this thing about that sorry you have to carry <laughs> well, on tarn alone doesn't die Ake takes well, his. I'm getting there. Takes his I'm sword. getting there. Come on, <laughs> give, give me some space. <laughs> the so he's he's uh so, but I mean, there's this thing where he's talking to him about hey, you have to carry on alone. Sorry about that, Coven brother. And he's like, and then he yep. so Tarn dies, and I mean he like he literally his eyes close and he's dead. But then um. Uh, Ake is able to take his sword and pull his essence out of his body and put it into himself. And he's kind of like, I'm never really alone. Yeah. Uh, and he well, just, it seems well. that what we reveal is that he, he's part of this thing is like, even in a failure now, like Tarn has probably grown stronger through that whole scheme, trying to reach this thing. And now that power, even though it didn't, that scheme didn't work. One, mm-hmm. Tarn is now stronger, or sorry, Ake is now stronger mm-hmm. because he's taking the essence of this really strong um, uh, shaman. Uh, and two, um, all of those kind of acolytes that were a part of the scheme have broken off into factions, and they're going to start their own little schemes, and out of that are going to grow more schemes. And so, Hammer Hall is just going to be flush with even more schemes from schemes from Zinch, and so. Like- they're even better off than they were before. I mean, it's like win, 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 win. All Zinch yeah. does is win, well, no matter what. It was really interesting is that um, not only did he get Tarn, but he got Zangir because they had split their souls. Oh, right, 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 because they're connected. Magisters. Yep. Two, four, and the, what was really interesting is that Ake had talked about this fact that he had, he was the 900th master of this sword and in nine what nine thousand whatever lives etc and it I, I think it very much is set to reveal that like it's the same person from the beginning to the end if a plot fails ache is there to take the soul of the person who failed mm-hmm. this internal long life because he keeps taking everybody's essence when they fail because he's the one that survives so what you're saying is Zinch it's a real cool Zinch is the is the only one who can take two wrongs and turn it into a right. <laughs> That's right. Totally <laughs> wrong. Um, but yeah, I mean, and so that's that's where they that's where we end. We've so the we've got the the three heroes that are f- floating away, or the three heroes in the city, um, Soul and Bryn and uh, Kuna, are floating away on a leaf as they watch their friend uh, Callus burst into Azir light. We've got uh, Selena getting touched by the Sylvaneth and becoming part of them, and Gardas recognizing her in, in what she brought to the, you know, 
brings to Stormcast. And I think you made the comment, Paul, um, at one point prior, as we were leading up to this recording, just about like changing positions. Maybe, mm -hmm. you know, will she be stay as a liberator? Um, and then we've got Ake, who's taken in the aftermath of this and comes out stronger. Uh, he mentions too that uh, that Callus is the strongest uh, Stormcast he's ever faced to this point, and a passable swordsman. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's all right, uh, but uh, uh, yeah, I mean, so um, you know, we've we've got. I, I feel like this book established some really good characters that I'd love sure. to see again. Yeah, for sure. Well, and they've so we have. Oh, go ahead. go ahead. No, no, all you. So, do we have an MVP in this book? Uh, I'm happy you asked. Uh, the The Stormcast was probably my favorite. Like, um, Karis. Karis, yeah, oh no, Karis. Uh, just a, both in terms of like effectiveness and ne necessity towards like saving the the city, but just his uh, I don't know if it's a dry sense of humor or, or you know his his Stormcast aloofness was what drew me to him uh, most, which is kind of a shame because this is an opportunity to see a bunch of different um, types of characters or different different roles, and yet I'm still drawn to the Stormcast for whatever reason. Um, but uh, for my money, Karis is where it's at. I want to see I want to see more of Karis in the future. How about you, Paul? Uh, I really liked Kuva. I really liked uh, Soul as well. Uh, but my favorite is probably going to be Ake. Very oh. cool, enigmatic, char enigmatic character. I like the possibility of what his character brings to the table. Oh. I've had, for yeah, a long I'm time, myself I've, more to that. I've, for a long time, I've or since the Zinch release, I wanted to take Ariman out of the 40k universe and turn him into <laughs> a Fate Master for Age of Sigmar. Uh, it would be really cool to try and and model him with a sword, the you know that sword and whatnot. But uh, yeah, he was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I really liked I really liked uh, Callus as well because I love the the Lord Veritans and the in the and the warrior priests. I love that whole like scheme. Um, but because I'm in the midst of um, the Age of Mirth arc with um, over uh, <laughs> uh, brother Overconfidus, <laughs> uh, you know this idea of a liberator who might become more. Um, I, I thought Selena just had a cool role. Um, you know, seeing seeing inside the ranks of the Stormcast from a particular viewpoint vantage point, seeing Gardas as kind of that that rock star, um, you know, sell, uh, you know, Stormcast, and what it's like to kind of just answer the call and be kind of in between the the mortals and the demigods, I guess, as it were, with you know, Gardas being a demigod. Um, and you know, just kind of where she, she seems like she could have an interesting path as well. Like she's just at the start of what she could become. So mm -hmm. that's cool. Well, and I feel like at least from the from a Stormcast perspective, she's like this is building off of what you're saying. The closest that we've come as an audience to sort of be an outsider. Not she's she's not an outsider, but like it's hard to put yourself in Gardas's shoes or you know Grim's shoes or something like that. Mm -hmm. So it, it she even though is a storm cast still can sort of be the stand in for us as the audience um, to like look at those people sort of above her. Yeah. We've not, yeah, we've not had the foot soldier POV well, of Stormcast mm -hmm. in order to get the, Hey, I, I know again. Yeah. I, I know more of what's going on than the mortals do, but there's still things that are above my pay grade and I'm sure. still, I'm still getting glimpses of those and trying to figure out how that works. Well, and there's yeah. plenty of opportunities. Or was, examples of her being like uncertain, which I don't know that I've seen many Stormcast have that uh, opinion or perspective. Mm -hmm. Like the, just the, the the lack of, and I can't think of another word of certain certainty. But um, it's it's good to to have that to to see that they're not necessarily not that she did anything wrong, but they're still not infallible or they're not all knowing. Like there are some in their ranks what? that are following orders. Go ahead, Paul. She did make some mistakes, right? Like when her friend was like, I'm going to go forward. She's like, I'm going to go forward too. Prime was like, yeah, no, we don't, we're not doing that, right? Like she did make mistakes. They weren't big mistakes. They weren't earth shattering mm -hmm. mistakes, right? But like there were orders are not following what she knew to be too true. Um, 
the other real interesting thing about her character is that Matt, that we've had a first person perspective of, or like, I have these memories. These memories kind of define who I am. But he's kind of had that, and Gardas has kind of moved beyond that. So with Serena, it's like, yeah, I have these memories. Actually, are like we don't know who she is anymore. She's she's finished the arc of the story. We have no idea who she was, right? She hears Elariel's story. Does that mean that she once was from Verdian? A Verdian, or does that mean something else? We just don't know. No. Thing perspective is that she's met her like momentous moment don't know who it was that she was and why she was chosen to be there yeah one other really hilarious to me it was hilarious of callus when they're fighting in the warehouse and mm -hmm. he's the only stormcast he's the only hallowed knight yet he's he's saying these statements that end with only the faithful <laughs> and nobody's it's like he he's like, so like you've got a human like and alpha me. dwarf he's like and he's like, who shall be victorious in the face of darkness? Only the faithful. <laughs> you got to imagine everyone else is just kind of like, mm. come on, guy. Yeah. It's, a little, it's a little socially awkward when you don't have 300 of you doing this. <laughs> 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 but it was also fun to just see like, okay, wh like, uh, what's the sound of one hallowed night clapping in the darkness? Uh, <laughs> 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 like, rrr, rrr. Um, but, uh, you know, just it, it was cool to see to me, it was just a funny moment of him like carrying on this tradition, but like it's it's so ingrained in them that that even if they're by themselves, they're relying mm -hmm. on these mantras uh, to kind of bolster them. Uh, but it's also it was also just kind of that character those uh, just added to some of those funny awkward moments or like was that a joke kind of moments? <laughs> yeah. You know, no, I, um, that's why I liked him so yeah. much. <laughs> yeah. Um, Any other so, thoughts? Um, I'm gonna. And I'm going to answer it myself to give you two time to think about it. But uh, my question is, did you have a favorite moment? The book was actually the second battle with the Zangors where they're fighting the actual trees themselves and they have formed the shield wall and Serena's there fighting and Gardas shows up with three retributors and they form this wedge and go, f you know, charging into the trees and they have this only the faithful. It was just, it was a real cool moment that really, to me, the writing really portrayed what it would feel like to be there and to have this like person just go up and start just smashing face and invigorating the battle line. It, it was, I thought it was really, really well done. Yeah, that's it wasn't a necessarily one. a pivotal moment, but I, I really liked that one a lot. So. Eric, what what would be your favorite moment? I think it was. Uh, I'm probably going to take this from Aaron. I apologize. Uh, Callus and Ake on the on the deck of the ship. Yeah, I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> um, I mean, it was it was just a cool moment. I mean, he he slams his his feral down. Yeah, feral down. I, yeah, I don't believe there's some ferals. <laughs> there's some ferals in a Josh Reynolds novel. He slams it down and it stays in place. Just stands there. <laughs> Uh, while he, you know, he and Ake circle each other and and they fight, he kind of feels like he has the room to, and and ability to do what he needs to do. Um, they're both kind of yeah, just these mountains and trading blow for blow, and it's so it's just cool seeing you know these two giant characters in the middle with a bunch of other stuff, you know, kind of on the periphery and and Tarn getting shot and all that kind of stuff. So uh, and crew members falling all over each other because. Uh, because soul uh, gauge is is awesome, awesome, doing awesome. Um, I just I just counted. I, I he, the word ferals in the book at least. Uh, oh, or maybe I'm searching the whole the whole Hammerhall book. Uh, at least I'm seeing it in there twelve <laughs> times. But maybe it might be from all the different stories though too. It's tough to say. I mean, if you counted all of Josh <laughs> Reynolds' books, there's an infinity of ferals. ferals and a whole bunch of ferals. Um, God, I, gotta think, I didn't even think of another answer. I was busy searching up feral, so I don't think <laughs> uh, my solution. Um, I liked uh, Sigmar and Alario getting into a fight. I liked when the Sylvaness, were, the, the leash sort of came off the Sylvaness a little bit, so they were able to like get into. You can sort of. It was just sort of palpable of them waiting on the sidelines, like they were so. Yeah. I don't know. Tentative. Or, to be clear, I don't know if we mentioned this either. Route. The Sylvaneth didn't get involved before because those souls pods were held hostage. So valuable. But the the yeah. threat was that they would that the the Zinch would just kill them. 
to kill the soul pods if the Sylvaneth interfered. And that was just not, not pot, you know, it's not something that they could do. Too, too, too high a price for, to yeah, take. Yeah. Out, yeah. We all did a great job of that summary of mentioning something in the first chapter after we talked about the entirety of the book. Yeah, well, I, was gonna, right. I was probably going to skip over the Sigmar stuff if somebody wanted to jump in and brought it up. So that was, we, I don't know. I always like that where they give us the character of the gods. I just do. Yeah. Oh yeah, that was great. Well, actually, and that, that was also towards the end of that chapter where Alero was like, Hey Sigmar, I don't need your help. And he's like, all right, fine, fine, fine. And he's like boogieing back out of there. And he's like, well, no, I'm still going to do something about it. Like, <laughs> sorry, right. Eddie. Can we just say there was a huge woman of mansplaining, right? Right. Like she's yeah. like, no. And Sigmar's like, no, well, I'm, I'm going to do it. Well, maybe like, I, I could do it. Yeah. Uh, so there, there is that. I mean, the rest of the book was great too, but a lot of the humanizing of the gods was was uh, a fun, fun bit. Um, All right. So, what did we learn about the mortal realms that we didn't know before? That apparently Sigmar can fly around and be like invisible, but like be places. Like I don't know that I've seen that before, or if not, I haven't. I, haven't I feel like that was the essence. It. Yeah. Ending right, like Alariel was doing. I I kind of got that feeling from it. Mm-hmm go like oh i'm gonna just shoot around and do things and at the end he didn't he didn't die and turn into the force no Um, he didn't he also wasn't meditating on a rock in the middle of space island either but you know um i mean i think i mean i think the the biggest thing out of this is that is how zinch is how zinch spreads how it starts right with Mm -hmm. A betrayal or with you know industriousness and cleverness and people and humans uh, hubris um and how zinch can gain those footholds and how that can influence i mean you talked about remember how the collegiate arcana arcane had built those gas balloons for him like that's not mm-hmm. something you just go and knock on their door probably and say hey can you build me like that was something that was probably like you know like a grant to uh, a business to build a new water park in the or a new you know um whatever you know like he was a he was a had keys to the city probably kind of thing right mm-hmm. like he was connected and that was because of zinch attaching himself to him early on and building him up and helping him rise to that importance and then even when that big scheme that would have just destroyed hammerhall like he about like he had the scheme and he had the power to almost just undo all the largest city that that Sigmar had put down, and mm-hmm. certainly a small band. A, it, it didn't take much to undo. Here's another thing: is that when you rely on rituals, a lot can mm-hmm. go wrong. Sure. Like it doesn't take much to topple that stuff, right? Um, so it, a, a small war band can can take out a, a big ritual, um, but then when it doesn't go right, there's still it's still infected. Like the city is still, um, you know, mm-hmm. it's got, it's got, it's tainted. It's got sure. chaos is, is even deeper in its, you know, roots. Yeah. Even with all so, the wards, even with the lava gate, right? Like you can't stop everything. Yeah. It's they're in there now, you know? So that's, I mean, I think that's the lesson for me is, is just, this is a really in-depth look at how Zinch operates in this new, um, state of the realms with these with these cities so. and you know it was maybe and not to compare books but it was maybe even more instructive than city of secrets was which i think ostensibly was on its cover supposed to be more about like that sort of zines infection i mean it was there too but uh this give you a more clear look behind the scenes i mean granted it's because we have the point of views probably from their perspective but um it maybe did a better job of that not just in well, they're not it's a better book. I don't know, but um. well, I mean, I, I think it, it's it's they go really well together. Yeah, well, they you do. Get, they complement each other. A lot of internal politics, and then you see, you know, this book's about somebody's kind of got that space outside, inside the city. Um, mm-hmm. You know, they they they're just, and that's that's Zinch right there. You know, sure. Mm-hmm. They, they like you said, they go well together. If you were going to read one, I would recommend you read the other to get a, a real complete yep. picture of how Zinch operates in the cities and the moral realms. So I have uh, two quick things we know about the mortal realms. Number one is that stormcasts are not silent when they walk. There's a real fun moment where Karis is walking on the Ethodox and it's like, stormcasts are many things, but not mystically silent when they're walking in full armor. That's true. I thought it was a real cool uh, line. 
Uh, but the other thing that I thought was really interesting uh, was the demonic possession of the trees. So it 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 was a. Uh, I don't know if it was a able to happen because they were Sylvaneth groves, right? So they have this special connection. They were talking a little bit about how the Sylvaneth part of the tree was warring with the Zinch possession. Uh, but it was interesting because it was a different implementation of possession than we've had before because dwarves have always had runes on their hammers and they've always been able to make, you know, blessed swords and, you know, like Toll himself uses a blessed, how, or a blessed rapier. But it was the idea of being able to take on, take control of something that's alive, but it's not necessarily sentient, right? It, it, it was demon possession in a completely different way, and I thought that was a, like it. It didn't sit. It didn't sit with me and being like, "Oh, that's just completely ridiculous." It was like, that's actually a really interesting way of using something that's established in the universe and just twisting it slightly, and it still makes sense and it's still completely reasonable. But I just never would have thought of using it in that way. Sure, yeah. Right. All right. I think that uh, wraps up quite a bit of what we I learned think, here. Think you got anything it. else? Yeah, anything nope, else? Nothing else? Yeah. No? Nothing. Okay, good. So final, do we do we need a final rating? Um, last time we did, uh, we each picked kind of our own rating system and gave it something. Any critiques or shortcomings? In terms of shortcomings, it was maybe just for me, just the the, the length and that I wanted more. Um, I, and this is just a personal thing. I, I do like the, and it it alluded to it, but I do like sort of the bigger picture continuity, the books, the, the, the Spear of Shadows, the, the Realm Gate Wars. And so it, it's not this book's fault that it isn't that. Um, but I, mean, I, I would like this book better if I, if I get to see more of these characters later in the future. It'll improve my experience reading this one if I know I can I can see them eventually. But that's just that's not a critique on how it was written or anything like that. I enjoyed it quite a bit. I'm gonna I'm gonna give, I'm gonna give it a rating right now. What? Give, give it one of these. A thumbs. A thumbs up. Nice. Aaron approved. Nice. How about you, Paul? Any critiques? Uh, I really enjoyed it. The only thing I I, I got a little lost and the explanation of exactly how the ritual is interrupted and how the pathway was derailed, and especially when follow, Serena goes in. Yeah. You're not meant to understand like, it. It wasn't <laughs> like, like, oh my goodness, it ruined the story for me or anything like that, but it was just kind of like, I don't understand exactly what's going on. It was a little bit like the webway in 40K to me, um, but it was, it was walking in, it was getting this thing, it was on this pathway. It just... I, I had a hard time visualizing it exactly what was going on hmm. and that detracted a little bit from the ending for me so like, I, wonder, I, I, I I wondered if they weren't trying to corrupt or like realm roots or something like that but that magic yeah and I definitely got that feeling because they talked about how it was like this wooden pathway or tree pathway they talked mm -hmm. about he talked about that so I think that was what they were trying to attempt to mm -hmm. and I, I think he did a good job it just for me it just it was a hard thing I didn't I don't know what would have how did, how did they it actually blow it up? Like, um, I mean, I've got we didn't go in. through and see the light coming in and like bursting the Zangor as they're going through, right? And the light hitting her and not touching her or something. I don't know. So, I mean, the so if you got two ends of it, you got the end in the forest, you got the end on the ship. Um, yeah. With with Callus sacrificing himself because he's saying yeah. the prayer, he's getting beaten up by. Uh, then the the pink horrors aren't so annoying. They're actually yep. murderizing him. Um, and through his death and his prayer and his staff, yeah. he's he's basically blowing up that end of the ritual. Yep. And it's careening back towards the hex woods. Yep. And it blows up that end. Yeah. And then why doesn't it continue on to the realm of Zinch? I, I mean, I think that it may, but I don't think that that's going to be a big enough blast to do anything to the realm of Zinch. Right, so it's yeah, it's big enough like, to close that that gate. Yeah, it's not that I don't understand it. It was just it it just because it was a little bit out of like where I understood it to be. Like it it wasn't very clear, and it was the last thing for the part of the story. It was just a little a little jarring for me. Sure. Um. So like I really enjoyed it. Uh. I'd, I'd give it seven of eight spider legs. Oh, seven, nice. Seven nice. of eight. 
Had to get spiders um, in there because there weren't any. Sure, that's true. I um, needed more spiders. Th- and there were no spiders, right? Yeah. Like so, fun. I yeah. I mean, I don't. I don't know that I had any critiques. Um, again, yeah. I I want to read more, but I didn't need it to be longer. Uh, I, I hope that we get to hear more about uh, any of any one or multiple of these characters. Be cool, I think, if um, Serena and Soul had always had connected storylines. Oh, sure. Because of their names. Um, I would give it uh, five out of five of Flux Cairns. Sure. <laughs> I mean, that's too many. Like Five out of five? Many. Just generally, if you, nine five, flux cairns. if you had fl- five Flux Cairns, that would, I mean, that'd be troublesome. How many Soul Pods are in those Flux Cairns? How would I give it five out of five Soul Pods? Okay. See that? Okay. That's, that, now that's not, enough, that? that's not enough soul pods. Gotta, <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know how to please you guys. Um, uh, no one ever does. So I'm not going to try any longer. Yeah. We're going to shut this boy down. Close it out. <laughs> it is time for our reforging. Like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Comment below. Leave a review for us on iTunes if you're listening. And follow us on Twitter. Um, Aaron, where can we find you? You can hit me up at, uh, at a bowler, A B O H L E R. Paul at PJ Shard, and you can find me, Eric, at Stone Monk Gamer on Twitter. Thanks again. Um, we'll see you next time.